modelers, welcome to the Model Geek Skill Modeling Podcast. Here, we will be discussing anything and everything as it relates to the world of scale modeling. Before we start, we would like to take a moment and thank all of you, the listeners out there, for your support. We would also like to thank our great sponsors for their support. Detailed Scale, Furball Aero Design, Tamiya USA, Sprue Brothers, and Basis by Bill. Please have a look at their websites and have a look at all their fine products. Now, buckle up and ride along as we journey into the world of scale modeling. We really hope that you will download and make us a part of your modeling bench sessions. Now, here are the geeks, Darren Cook, Scott Samo, Andrew Frill, and Andrew White. All right. Hey, guys, what's up? Um, we've got uh, we're here with the old Model Geeks podcast crew. Um, got the full full edition, full house tonight. We got D-Ran back from VK. Welcome back, VK. D-Ran. That's exactly got, right. VK. Yeah. We got El Presidente hopping in as well. Welcome, Tim. That's Glad a kangaroo, here. Yep. kangaroo uh, tag there. Hopping in. <laughs> uh, Whitey, what's up, man? Welcome to the old cast Good to be uh, here. Good to be here. Awesome. Good to see you. Frill. What's up, homie? Hey, How man. Good. I'm doing good. pretty good. Good deal, man. Like I said, we got the whole cast and crew here tonight. Um, rocking off with uh, episode number 57. We'll roll into, once we get past all the, the, the normal uh, discussions, we'll roll into a main topic of painting natural metal finishes. Everyone's favorite. Yeah. Everybody's favorite. 57? 57, man. Is that crazy or what? Ah. Oh, boy. Man. Time flies. <laughs> yeah. Time flies when you... Well, hopefully... Yeah, me and my, you were down there in Australia recording, what, in 163 or something with those guys? Yeah, yeah I know, right? Yeah. Jeez. That, that must have been... Yeah, we'll... we'll get, I, we're anxious we're to, youngins. Anxious to get... Yeah, we're the we're the youngins still. Got a long ways to catch up. Yeah. Long ways to go. Yeah, we're, we're, we, 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 we be doing okay though. We're doing okay. Yeah. Um, all right, man. Well, let's jump right into it. Uh, you know, again, welcome everybody. And, uh, let's get talking some models. Cause I think that's what everybody likes to do. Um, all right, I'm, I'm going, we're going to crack right into freaking D D-Ran. Darren, D-Ran. what's up, man? How, how, how are you doing? How was your trip? I'm, and, uh, I assume you, you're not really working on much cause you've been gone, but anyway, just. Yeah, I'm, fill us in, man. What's up in your world? When I'm staying awake, I'm doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm trying to claw my way out of email hell from work. Oh goodness, but, I bet, man. Uh, you know, it's uh, I got this new iPad for work that, and you just can't go through all your emails, man, like you can on a regular computer. And yeah, I got back here, and it's just I'm swimming in emails. But uh, no, I. I did break out uh, the the Phantom the F four E just cool. to start sanding on a little bit as I'm uh, sitting down there Everybody. with a cup of coffee in the morning. Yeah, man. But uh, you know, there hasn't been much model building, unfortunately. I did come home to some pretty good mail call stuff. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Yep. Um, and uh, you know, that's time to get back in the saddle. Good got deal. a Hornet to get done. I got a Phantom to get done before Nats, and that's just right around the corner. So, good deal, man. Well, yeah, welcome back. I'm sure we'll thanks. we'll sure we'll hear more of the escapades and and uh, heard you guys had a, a pretty decent podcast recording with the on the bench guys. Yeah, uh, we did. Yeah. Sure, that was fun. That'd be yeah. fun to get get everybody together. But every once in a while, you know, sitting in with those folks, you know, especially those, you know, they they've been around for the longest, so that yeah. must have been a blast. It was a lot of fun. It really was. Met some really good people, um, you know, and. Uh, well, hey, let's talk about that right now. Let me let me just jump into it and then say, you know, thanks to A to Dave Goldfinch. He came all the way up from uh, uh, southern Australia. There was it in like eight hours, nine hours. He drove up, stayed stayed Holy two nights goodness, up there. Man. Wow. Um, Ray Davis and Craig Ferguson awesome. both came down from the Sydney area. Uh, we ended up going and hitting a couple of museums: the uh, the Fleet cool. Air Arm Museum there at Albatross in Nowra. Uh, and then out to the Historical Aircraft Restora- Restoration Society or HARS Museum, which cool. was way cool. Um, you know, we lots of great 
aircraft. Uh, one of the at the fl- at the Fleet Air Arm Museum, they had a Gannett, which I've never seen one of those up close and personal. Aren't they uh, beautiful? Oh, they're just ugly. They beautiful. are. They are. Yeah, they're ah. so ugly. They're beautiful. <laughs> those things are so ugly. It's still cool looking. You it know, is. Like the, oh, you know, it's just so, is just, yeah, it's I, neat, man. I can't wait for that kit to come out. <laughs> it is a a, a feat of engineering. It's an engineering marvel the way they did that. I mean, if you actually get up and look at the wing fold just itself, yeah. it's just nuts. And then they had, cool they had the motor sitting out in the counter rotating prop assembly. Isn't uh, that motor just a? Oh, it's a beast! Wow. It's just crazy looking. Yeah. Oh. So cool. You know, so, so everything from a Gannett, uh, the the Gannett there. Then out the fleet air arm, mm-hmm. they had uh, my favorite was that two seat. A four that you sent us a picture of. Yeah, that, that that's I would love to do one of those. It's just cool looking, man. That was boring. Really cool. <laughs> it was real cool. <laughs> boring. Well, no, the scheme is is badass. Those those seventies yeah. eighties schemes at the uh, Aussies. They're had. cool, man. So they had Beautiful. the TA four. Yep. That was a TA four G. Yeah, and then they had an A four G sitting next to it, and it was cool. crazy the difference in size with them sitting side by side. Yeah. It yeah. just, I don't know if it's because it's it just extended nose. It just made it look so much bigger. Wow. Uh, cool, sitting man. Right next to each other. Um, out at, at the Harz Museum, they had a uh, an aardvark, which you can walk around. Uh, yeah, cool, man. Uh, a couple of, uh, oh, what was that thing called? Uh, Canberra, two Canberras. Sweet. Nice. Uh, a, a P3, uh, which I believe is the only uh, privately owned P3 in the world. Oh, huh, uh, cool. Sitting there on the ramp. Uh, just, man, super You think if me and Frill it. went down there, they'd let us take center seat for a, for a go? Probably. I bet we could talk them into that, Frill. You think? I think so. I could start you, engines again. You could. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, you probably but, would remember how. Button in, light on, air drop. Yeah. It's a, it was beautiful. That, that, yeah. That, that, that was cool really It was a nice they, looking airplane. That's cool that they keep those things flying. Not not just that, but they have a Neptune as well, you said, yep. right? Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that's cool. good stuff. They had, uh, the uh, Super Connie was going through a, a prop change. Um, you know, I mean, that's you a cool it. looking older aircraft, man. That's, oh, yeah. those are just, uh, you know, those are cool. Yeah. yeah. Way cool. So, okay. yeah, some great museums. And then, then we ended up recording an episode of On the Bench uh, there at the hotel, which was a lot of fun. Uh, and I, let me tell you something else that happened. Let's talk about small world. Uh, I'm sitting in a meeting at Sikorsky and uh, taking a break. And young lady down the couple of seats down says, comes over and says, hey, look at this. And her husband at Tech says, hey, do you know, you know, Darren Cook? <laughs> so, yeah, he's sitting like two people down from me. <laughs> and it's uh, Callum. Gibson, and that was his there wife. There you go. And, yeah, uh, he's uh, he is the ham-fisted modeler on Facebook. Small uh, world, man. Yep, small world. They ended wow. up having a, a barbecue out at their house, and I went out uh, and spent an afternoon there with them. And sweet, uh, he's very talented. I posted some pictures uh, on the in the Model Geeks Model Shack. Uh, yep, for everybody to check out. But yeah, those are awesome, man. Really, yeah, he does really some nice good. work. Really yeah, nice work. Yeah, that so, I think I I didn't know that it was his, but. Uh, one of the pictures I've got saved, either I saw it on the internet somewhere or whatever. It's that A4 that has the blurred, um, yep. cause I was, I just thought that was such a unique way to display an in-flight, you know, model. It, I was like, man, food, man. it, it does. It does. I, I just thought that was super unique and executed really well. I didn't realize that was his man. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Wow. He's, he's cool. really good. He's also uh, a very talented photographer. He's also the ham fisted photographer and does uh, aviation <laughs> photography uh yeah he's really good at it so wow. yeah but great people small world uh yep. great time down under uh i'll be going back several times here over the next couple of years so uh, cool looking forward to seeing all those folks again it's gonna maybe be one time we'll have to come uh, you know accompany you you got yeah. any openings over there in the office yeah, you need a guy yeah. yeah you never know never know you know i'm your guy they, you saying. know somebody <laughs> You know I somebody? know you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I say you know a guy. If I need somebody, you know a guy. Yeah. Cool. So, anyway, yeah, good stuff. Good deal, man. Well, glad to have you back. Happy you had a safe trip. Had an awesome trip, you know. And uh, but but we're all selfish. We we like having you back. So you know, I'm happy like to have home. you back. Uh, have you home? And uh, of course, back on the 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 old podcast. So anyway, cool, yep. man. Well, thanks for the update and uh, get get cracking on all your model crap so you can take stuff to, to Nats this year. 
Got it. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, Tim, how's it going? Yes. And what you working on? It's going great. Cool. Um, <clears throat> so I'm I'm trying to not be distracted by a whole lot of other stuff going on around the house. Uh, we got, uh, you know, uh, an old friend coming in to visit uh, this weekend. So my next, uh, the weekend and the week is, this coming week is going to be kind of um, away from the modeling bench, which is unfortunate. Uh, although rumor has it, um, the two ladies are probably going to be busy, which means I might actually get a little extra modeling time. There you go. Um, anyway, that's, that's just a rumor. So what's going on? Well, I'm, I'm working on, uh, gee whiz. I, I, I actually finished a, uh, uh, 70 second scale air fix, uh, Spitfire Mark one. There you go. The other day. And I did that in, uh, 48 hours, a Mojo motivator. Holy geez. Start to finish. And, uh, um, it, uh, I, I'm, it was really, I, I did it as an in-flight, put it on a stick kind of thing. And, uh, cause I just wanted, I wanted something that would come together quickly. Yeah. And it was great. Uh, talk about a motivator. And, um, I, I, I really enjoyed that one. And I did that because I had to pause my uh, Macross build. It's uh, the Hasegawa YF-19 Macross. It's not a bad kit. I was at the the, uh, sticker stage, and um, I just, uh, I lost it. I I just, I I came real close to just putting it in the trash, and I said, you know what? I just need to take a vacation on this one and park it over here and think about how I want to do do the stickers going forward, either paint them. Uh, or, uh, yes. um, yeah, well, or put them on. I, I'm, uh, it's real frustrating. Um, yeah. it, it, and for those of you that don't know and are not into Macross, cause I'm not, I'm doing this as part of a group build and, uh, just for the heck of it. And it, it, it turns out that you paint the aircraft, you paint the model one color, and then you just, all the markings literally are stickers. You just put, you put them on. Wow. Great concept. Um, I'm just not real good at executing. <laughs> gotcha. My, <laughs> my Sky Knight, which is my uh, uh, my mid killer build. Um, yeah. You know, I, a couple weeks ago I had a, uh, a catastrophe where a uh, unfortunately a sleeve uh, rubbed against a wingtip, and the next thing it did is it bounced off the uh, off the floor. Oh my and, goodness! Um, yeah, yeah that'll, split the, that'll that'll take the mojo out of you. Yeah, split the nose and um, uh, bent the tail, but uh, or cracked it rather. Didn't bend it, just cracked it. So I was able to get all the, the uh, repairs um, almost done. Uh, I've got a a ghost seam that I'm still working on on the underside of the nose, but I think I got the one on the on the top of the nose um, eliminated. At least uh, you know when I took the flashlight and used the uh, um, the judge's method and and said, "Can I find a seam?" I did, yes, find a seam, but man, it was so damn hard to see. I'd say it's yeah. close enough for you, Tim. You nitpicker. Yeah. You nitpicker. Yeah, I know. I'm a nitpicker. <laughs> I need a t shirt that says I'm a nitpicker. I'm a nitpicker. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, that'd be a great t shirt for Nats, wouldn't it? I'm a nitpicker. That would be Especially, good. And, I, and wear that on judging day. It's not yes. going to be judged anyway, right? It, going into the, do, do those group builds get judged? I don't, I don't recall. Yes, that. they do. They actually they do, do. Okay. actually a category and they get judged. Um, I didn't know that until I just thought it was a display only kind of thing. But at yeah, last year's yeah, match, same, same. There were yeah. three. Uh, there was two. I, I, it was either two teams or one big team of four, maybe five people that were walking around looking each, and they were judging them like any other um, e- element that gets judged. That was the only yeah. thing they did because they had so many models to look at. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But I, I thought it was just, okay, count the number of models. Do they all look pretty good? Yeah, okay, then um, we like this one best kind of thing. But no, yeah, that's what I thought. Handed, yeah, they actually handed out awards. Um, like so, as a group, right, though? as like Oh, yeah, yeah, as a group. Yeah. So all right. The group all right. wins, not an individual model. But they sure. were look, They were literally on, you know, it was what last year? The tanks yeah, and that the was A4s? The, 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 triple, the triple P's uh, Sherman build. Yeah, that's and what won. They no, yeah, it was the P51. So. Oh, that's right. It didn't. It did P51s. Yeah. Yeah. The P. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, and they, yeah. but they were, uh, I, I saw them in there. They were in there looking at them just like judges would any other, any other wow. uh, model. It was, I, I was impressed. I just walking around um, and looking because we, <laughs> I had finished, well, I had finished judging the, the stuff I was judging and, and said, well, let's just look around, see how things are going. And, 
and holy cow, these guys are actually judging the, the group. Wow. Goals. Yeah, I didn't I didn't realize that. Wow, that's cool. I would hate to get yeah. picked, but they're, they're given that category. Hey, you guys got collections. You're like, yeah. holy yeah. shit. And one category, one one group build, there's 80 or 90 something models. I'd be yeah. like, uh, OK, I mean, oopsie. I think and again, let's not go down the rabbit hole of judging, but I'll, I'll <laughs> yeah. say that I would. It, it's cool that they give an award. Because people put the effort in and all that kind of stuff, but I, I, those, those should be display is kind of how I feel. Yeah, but whatever, I, man. I mean, if they toss out, just I, pick, pick which one you think looks the coolest or whatever. Right, yeah. that, that would be me. I'd, I'd have to walk around and go, okay, that looks cool. Boom, I would. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. Wouldn't spend I'd be, a whole I'd be lot doing a broad brush kind of sure, view yeah. of. Oh yeah, it's there's no way you know, I'd do a deep dive. What is most it's, impressive, like you know, kind yeah. of thing. I wouldn't do like, well, this one had 46 yeah. teams and this one had 27. So, <laughs> oh my God. 27 one wins. 30 yeah. Mustangs in a, uh, yeah. in a group build. I'm not going to check the alignment of the no. wheels of every <laughs> oh, Mustang. No. No. Like, you know, forget yeah. about that. Just Although what I, looks coolest. That man, does. Okay. I, I thought our, I thought a four one was pretty cool though. So, oh yeah. You know. I thought it was yeah, awesome. yeah. Yeah. That's good. That was, that was oh, a fun. Oh, that's one. my, uh, but the uh, the Sky Knight's my um, MIG killer entry. Cool. I want to I get that done. And it's uh, it was from uh, VMF uh, N 513, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Conley and Master Sergeant uh, Scott. Uh, they had two two uh, MIG kills in uh, 1953. Cool. So they're, they're the guys I want to do. And I've been working on this thing for a long time. Now, and then, go ahead. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, Tim, you're... You know, obviously, aviation history guy here too. And um, the Scott, that was the first jet on jet uh, action, correct or no? Oh no, I, not not by the time they got theirs. The first uh, uh, the, it I thought may the have first been jet on jet kill was it was a Sky Knight? No, uh, you know, I I haven't read that. I'll, I'll be honest, I haven't read that. In the okay. I've got one reference on these guys, and it's just Marine night fighters that goes back through World War II and into Korea. Yeah. All right, and it doesn't talk about that being the first jet on jet. So I, I yeah, have there, to assume that there was another jet on jet kill before that. Huh. I don't. Know. I thought you know, I heard Sky Knights were the first first guys to to do it. Well, there was a show but, that came yeah. on um, the history the History Channel called Dogfights, and one of them is about the Sky Knight getting a mid kill. Right, that's a great series. Yeah, they definitely got kills. Um, of, you know, it, th that's why Tim's doing that subject. But, but I think I, I. But they would mention this is the first jet on jet or yeah, whatever. So, you know? so according to Air Force Magazine, um, the first jet on jet victory in history was a uh, Soviet-made MiG fifteen going down in flames at the hands of an American F eighty, uh, Lieutenant Russell J. Oh, I'm going to screw up because uh, it doesn't have his last name. Anyway, it was, a, it was an F-80. An F-80, um, okay, cool. Yeah, so All it was right. an F-80. Um, I, I think that well, might be the I, one that's why I the, said uh, it was. That may be on the Nats sheet from last uh, from last Nats. Uh, I, I think it is, yeah. Because yeah. otherwise, wouldn't wouldn't they have put a um, a Sky Knight on the on the Nats sheet? Yeah, yeah, it true enough. First. Yep, because they, 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 they do have a nice collection of in fact, that those are there's two subjects on that sheet that I'm going to do. One of them being that F80, the other right. one being the F80, uh, F82, the uh, twin Mustang kill. Yeah, I can't find the guy's name on here now. Uh, it, I mean, when I clicked on the link, it, uh, it made this massive document that I'd have to read. But uh, All right. anyway, my apologies to uh, uh, Lieutenant Russell. First name Whatever. Russell. Yeah, whatever your last name is, I I, I uh, apologize uh, profusely to uh, to not being able to to say your last name. I, you know, hopefully somebody will write in and say what it is. Oh, we'll hear. Yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you will. There, there's there's got to be at least one Air Force guy out there who's gonna who probably you know lives maybe by that. maybe you know, one I mean, or two. You know, we, yeah, we walk around knowing pretty much who all the famous Navy guys are. Uh, that's just who we are. Um, still in work on that, uh, uh, airfix, uh, Dornier. Um, but I'm, I'm, I don't want to say I'm losing interest. I'm, I'm getting pulled <laughs> to my uh, EA3, uh, EA3B conversion. Um, you know, I'm taking the Hasegawa A3 and converting it to an EA3. Um, and I'm, I'm doing a lot of research on the wing fold cause I want to fold the wings. And, uh, 
um, this last week, um, yeah, just before the weekend, I had, uh, I remembered seeing a really nice photograph of the wing fold mechanism because every, every photograph I could find um, in any of the ref- other references that I've got, um, it was always from the same angle. It almost feels like it was the same photograph. So it, I then went for a search on my own computer here and, and eventually found the, uh, the series of photographs that Bert Kinsey had forwarded to me, um, gosh, months ago. And I, I, I hadn't forgotten about them because I knew they were there, but I didn't realize that they were specifically an EA-3. And so it had a lot of obviously good detail photographs of an EA-3, but it also had five or six, five, five really nice shots from different angles of the wing fold. So cool. between, between that and um, the 148 trumpeter wing fold mechanism that Whitey's going to loan me, um, I think I can uh, scale that down and modify it so that it's a little more accurate looking. And now I'm kind of getting hot on, man, I really want to work on that. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, even if all I do is, uh, you know, in the near term is just cut the wings and at the wing fold mechanism, but well, you got to go where the mojo takes you, man. It, it, I do, I do. And that's why I've got, you know, um, a score of, uh, uh, models on the, uh, on the shelf here that are in work in progress, but every now and then I pull three or four off and just knock them out. Cool. Fun stuff. Anyway, that's, that's all that's uh, going on in, uh, in my, uh, in my basement. Sweet. Well, thanks for the update, Tim. Um, Whitey, over to you, man. What you got going on? What's All working right, well, on? Uh, over the Memorial Day weekend here, I finished up the uh, F-8 Crusade. Sweet. The, uh, Dick Bellinger Jet, 148 Haskell Bird. Um, wrapped up all the fiddly bits on that. And so I'm calling it done. Uh, I could probably weather it more. Um, but I don't, you know, I kind of talked about this before, I think the last episode, maybe about like when it, I, I get down to like this, the weathering stage or the finishing stage. Yeah, man. I weather it and I, I call it good enough and I move on because I want to get yeah. into the next project. And then like last night I was on Facebook and listen, looking at someone on like the SMCG page had a phantom and the underside was really just nicely weathered and Bellinger's jet was used, you know, man, they're out there on the risk and he, Doing oh, this they're beat thing. up, yeah. And and I look at mine now, and I'm going, man, I need to streak this thing up. Like, you know, I need to get <laughs> the oils out. I need to make this thing messy. Um, and then, you know, so I'm calling it done. But at the same time, I think I'll, I see myself yanking that thing off off the display shelf out here in the yeah. in the in the man cave and, and throwing more oil on it or something, man. Um, I would, I, just, I mean, I would just use just. Some post-it notes and just like a thin black brown mix with the airbrush and just streak it, you yeah. know, rather than use it. It's just it's, you know, I like or the oils I mean, though. Like you ever see Justin do the oils? Yeah. You know how he does that? Like just man, that just looks cool. I know I just I use the air I just use I just use the airbrush because it's easier. I, I yeah. it's, you know, but I but I but he does know how to use those oils, man. I I I will but I agree, like weather that sucker, you know. It looks good already. So I think if you oil it up yeah. and weather, man, it'll look really, really good. Yeah, like like I said, I, I've mentioned that before. The, to to a, I get to a stage, I it's like the weather more, interest. you know. Yeah, but I get to a point to where I'm like, I feel like I'm done, and and yeah. I, I just want I, I, maybe I, I just want to get on to the next project. And so I go, oh man, it looks good enough, you know. And I, <laughs> I call it good, and I, and I move on. So that's what I've kind of done. Come, uh, you know what is it Sunday or Monday or whatever today's Tuesday night we're out here recording but anyhow yeah uh, so in the me in the interim of I, I got the Mavis back out the Sweet. 72nd scale cool. Japanese flow plane yeah um which is supposed was supposed to be part of uh clubs not a Japanese zero you, build you'll make it one of these uh, days I, I mean make it, you know <laughs> when's the next display for that Nats, I guess, Nats. right? It is Nats. Yes. It's okay. So it, it'll be in the back of your, it'll be in the bed of your truck going to Nats by, uh, holy shit, August. Perfect. Yeah. yeah perfect. Um, well, yeah. The, the end of July, preferably the July yes, meeting. That's Roger when I that. really want to collect everything. That way I've got a couple of weeks yeah. to, if I need to move them to other boxes, I can. Okay. Thank you. I need a deadline because that makes me work harder. Um, yeah. I'll have it, I'll have it done for that. I, that's my goal. Get it done. Good deal, um, man. 
So I got it. I got that rolling. I'm back on the Mavis, and that's my focus right now. Get that thing done up for the uh, display um, seaplane, so I don't have to mess with wheels, man. You know, so that's cool. I'm <laughs> there just gonna you go paint it up. I'm gonna dirty it up. I'm gonna uh, yeah, man. Do whatever and throw it on a stand and give it to Tim. There you go. There <laughs> no, you but go. you got you got floats. You got to mess with. Yeah, floats, and there is some rigging involved, which I'll do the whole one to wire thing with that. Um, yeah, as seaplanes go, that's a beautiful airplane, though. I mean, I I just love how that thing looks. Cool. That's where I'm at. That's my that's my uh, good deal, man. Bench. Well, uh, that's cool that uh, you got the F8 finished. So that's a big you know check in the block there for the old Mig Killer Group build, and uh, and then knocking out the the club build with the the you know any not a Japanese zero, which is not another Japanese zero, which is pretty cool. So. Good deal, man. Well, good luck working on the other stuff and, um, you know, look forward to seeing your stuff in person, man. All right. For real. What's up, man? What you working on? How you been, man? Well, What's new in your hood. Uh, nope. Truck issues. <laughs> and, but, but I did get some time to get the bench this weekend and I got the, uh, RPG models, 135th scale, um, CRAM complete. There you go. Yeah, well, so it's not painted yet, but all the photo etches on. You need to go through and uh, use some cool. debonder to clean up excess super glue here and there. Did you have to channel your inner dirks to get all the pee on that thing? Yeah. I didn't solder anything. It's didn't all solder all anything. Super... Okay, okay, no. okay. It's all super glue. Man, Man. I'll tell so, you what, nice. Frill. I, when I was over there the other day, what was I over there? Was I dropping off something or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drop off some. Drop off something. Left my phone there. Had to come back. Anyhow. <laughs> 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 so i'm down there in the in frill shop man and he's showing me that thing and it's a unique subject it'll yeah. be fantastic once it's done but the amount of photo etch on that thing and i know ian likes to chirp about photo etch being your friend well brother <laughs> that better be your like life mate if you want to build one of those things because uh, yeah, I, the, the steps alone on that i mean it looks fantastic but you gotta, you better really recage your compass and want to mess with some photo etch when you build one of those. <laughs> yep. Things, so man. you got sixteen of those on the launcher base, and then up on the R two D two thing where the radar stays, there's like yeah. eight or ten up there. That you got what? To what posi- Like, what was the what was the inspiration for it was, that? Honestly, it was when I saw Dirks' uh, uh, Sea Wiz at a show. Okay. And I thought, oh, okay. that's kind of cool. Yeah. You know, being Something a different. Navy guy, and yeah, you know, I've been on a carrier or two in my day. Yeah, man. And uh, we something different, just something to have around. That's something like it actually started out something that I could take to our Friday build sessions up at the game. Okay. Yeah. A lot of my stuff now is in, you know, in paint. And I'm like, oh, I'm not going to, yeah. you know, I'm not going to haul my compre- my uh, yeah, air yeah, tank and stuff up there and spray. And yeah. so I was just looking for something that I could just, you know, work on. I knew there was going to be a crap ton of photo etch. So I could do that and uh, just construction stuff and work on scenes. Well, cool, man. I got it done. Got the working on it there and got brought it home, started working on it some more. And a couple of weeks later, it's ready for primer. So I got Good that deal. going. That's sitting over there. And then uh, I really, I worked on the, I was looking at the F4, looking at, checking all my seams. And then it hit me. And Uh-oh. What my dump, and what my dumb Uh-oh. ass did. Uh-oh. On an F4B, what in particular with the intakes? specifically the intake lip on yeah. the painted uh <laughs> intake lips the paint the fuselage color wraps around to the inside right. of the intake and i had forgotten to paint that before i put the intakes on so i had to get creative and do some crazy masking to get masked off and get it sprayed Uh-oh. so i recovered from that and i got that got that going so i'm getting it's, it's getting close almost there to you the paint go barn. and that's my uh model geeks group build the uh my my mid killer it's going to be a vf 43 cool. f4b and then so yesterday was when my the whole crap storm really started so i came down Uh-oh. to the bench and uh was working on the clod got the messing around messing ah the clod uh, yes the clod. and uh and i made some pretty good progress on the clod yeah and i got the tail i got the red painted i got it there masked go. off and now I'll have Tim, like, what's that coding called again? Any, any, Ama Eero. Ama Eero. Ama Eero. That stuff. Well, there's no. Really, Ama Eero. Ama Eero. Ama Eero. Depends yeah, on how, how, what kind of accent you want to throw on it. I'm from the South. So. Damn it, Zero. Yeah. Ami. It's Ami Eero. 
Ami Eero. So I had my base code of LP11 down, and I went ahead. And I got to look. I got to f- do some research and see if the ailerons, if they were, you know, skin with metal or were they fabric. But I went ahead. I got that fabric. done. Okay, cool. So, and so then these things, these dead design, dead design models, they have masks for the control surfaces. Yeah, man, that's good stuff for yep. the Claude. And I'm not sure. That's what I used on the K84. If you guys are going to be able to see it very well, I don't know. Turn a light on. He's real showing but, us. We got video going, so he's showing us his his his, his model see, of the Claude. Uh, you might be able to see it better in person, but I put the mask on. And they work great. They cool. want to treat the quote that our friends across Nick the farm. Claude. And uh, so when it came to that Amioro, whatever <laughs> thing, I know. Uh, I was like, well, what am I going to do? So I mixed up some Tamiya clear orange with a couple drops of um, smoke. And I thinned the bejesus out of it. There you go. With, uh, I think I use leveling thinner because I want it. Cause you know how sometimes you spray Tamiya clears, they can, uh, you, when you put them on, when you thin them out real good. They can kind of get a little beat frosty. Up on you. A little frosty. You know, I've seen them get a little frosty. A little yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've seen that. So yeah. I use leveling thinner so I could get thinned down good enough and it wouldn't do that. It was go. And so I did, I went down and I sent you guys some pics yesterday and I thought I had the underside to, uh, I thought the underside was too um, too dark. So then I went back, mixed up some LP11, and went over spots of it, and I like it better now. And I was looking, and there's a you know there's a few builds of a Claude out there, and some of them they did the the chipping of that coating. I kind of didn't like that. I was like, uh, but I saw one, and you sent me it too from that aviation. Aviation of Japan website. Where yeah, that's had built Nick that Millman's. I think that's his website. It's and awesome. And so I like that, how it was more rubbed off, like around yep. the cockpit area and stuff. So I did that. So I went back with some thin LP11, and I kind of went over that area to kind of show it like it was rubbed off. Go. And I'm really happy with the way it came out. I really cool. am. So I'm like, all right, don't touch it. But those uh, those dead design masks work awesome. Yeah, they're I good like. stuff. It looks cool, really man. cool. And like, you can't really notice it when you look at it directly, but like it's sitting here off to my left. And when I look over at it, I can see everything just popping. Sweet. And I'm, I'm like, yeah, so I'm getting stoked on that. So cool, man. I'll go around. I'll shade a few areas up and stuff. There and you go. That kind of thing. But yeah, it's cranking along on that. And then I can do the, uh, the cowling. Yeah. When you and were I talking ch- earlier, dude, about how the whole rubbing versus chipping, Two different things altogether, yeah, yeah, and, and and definitely like it's cool that you did it that way because yeah, with like the, the pilot and the crew are getting in and out, man, it's gonna it's gonna rub, it's not gonna chip yeah. necessarily, yeah. yeah, it's gonna wear, um, you know, so that that that's cool. I'm looking forward to checking that out in person, man, and I dig the uh, the coating you put on it looks uh, looks the part, man. For oh, sure. thanks. And I got the wheel spats painted white and. Uh, yeah, I got this thing done here pretty soon. Cool, man. And uh, that's it. Awesome. That's all, that's all I got. Awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah, the the I can't wait to see the Claude. I'm I'm, I'm such a Japanese kick right now. I it's, I'm just it, I just never noticed them before. You know. Yeah, so you, uh, you, I, you're like buying them up left and right, bro. It's well, stupid. It's I was looking through my stash, <laughs> and of course, I got a lot of American stuff. Yeah. But when it comes to like Japanese and German stuff, I got, I got more it. Japanese stuff. I got two. I got a little bitty 70 second scale kit and I got a roof and that's it. That's all I've ever built. What is it? Did you discover that like, because we all know you're a paint and finish guy. Yep. So these Japanese aircraft, holy cow, (sighs) you can just go crazy with them, right? You can go crazy. Talk about going crazy with cheese or just like all of it. Yeah. All of the above, the, all the of schemes, it. the in the field scheme, it is, everything, yeah. man. All of it, man. You could just have fun with the airbrush and just go crazy, man. It's just, yeah, I love it. I really, and, uh, really dig it. When I get out of Facebook jail, I will. Uh, I'll post <laughs> the of what I'm doing. Yeah, man. And I'm in. I'm in jail for something what, you that do? was posted back in freaking February. What? Yeah, you know that meme from that movie where it's a guy. I forgot. 
Uh, what's There's the no acronym? statute of limitations wow. when it comes to FB. No, that's old, right. Old Zuckerberg, man, he gets his tentacles on you. You yeah, ask, ask Whitey how he knows. He's like he a triple a, triple X criminal. con. And Facebook it's that one criminal. That's, it's that one that you see everywhere, where he's like on there. He's got the you know the the get uh, the the noose around his neck and everything, and he's like, ah, first time. Oh yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And I had like liked that or something, or I shared. No, I shared it back in February. And I went to go get on a couple of weeks ago, and it was like, hey, you were banned. You cannot post. You cannot do this. I'm like, what the heck? And you have a, 180 days to dispute oh, this. Man. Wow. Yeah. That's nuts, and if you man. don't dispute it within 180 days, you are permanently banned. Uh, That's so yeah. stupid. Some of the stuff that they post on there that I'm like, I wasn't searching for that. Why is that popping up on my screen? And I'm like, huh. But then you can't have certain things. Yeah, whatever, man. But. I know our Never. listeners That's can't the one see you, it. Yeah, he's just showing. But the one I'm doing is do. right cool. here. It's got the red tail with the white wheel yeah. spats, and it has cool, a man. yellow or a yellow, a white and blue chevron cool. on the yeah, fuselage yeah. and the wings. Sweet. Yeah. Cool, man. Yep. That's sure. well, hurry up and get that thing done so we can see it. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> Breaking rule number one, right? Yep. Hurry up. What's, Don't rush. What's, and what scale is that? Uh, 148 scale. It is 148. The true man scale. Cool. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Thanks for all. I appreciate the update. Yeah, man. Uh, as for me, uh, I finished the damn model. I finished the old Arma Hobby 72nd scale K84. And, uh, you know, again, I, I always laugh and joke about how I'll never, ever build a 72nd scale kit again. And But when they when they make them that nice, that's I'm full of crap. Because it, it, it was a great kit. It was easy to build. Um, no issues at all whatsoever. And, uh, I think it, it, I had a lot of fun and it goes, it goes together quick, you know, that's the thing. And I was able to, to work on it in my hotel room and Jack's and, uh, was, I'm pretty happy with, with how it turned out. I need to post some pictures up of it. Um, but it was, uh, it was a lot of fun to build and, uh, hopefully Tim, I made you proud and I finished a, a group build one. And I guess just, you know, whenever you want it, I can drop it off to you or at the next me- show, uh, model club meeting or whatever. Uh, July would be preferable because okay. I'm not going to make the June meeting. Okay, cool. I'll give it to you then. Um, let's see here. Then I'm also working on, I started, uh, I had started that to me, a 48 scale one Oh nine, the, the E four, the tropical version. Um, I'm actually doing the markings that are in the kit. I'm just going to paint everything. I'll use some of the, the probably use the, the number marking. It's a number eight. It has got some funky red outline Yeah, just be easier to just use the decal. So I'll do my best to make that thing look, um, painted on. Um, but, uh, I've got, I'll, I'll paint all the other markings, but it's already, it's painted up and all the base coats are on. So I'm just having fun kind of weathering it and painting it. And hopefully I can get that done soon. Then after I finish that, I, I want to finish the, I've got a Hasegawa 32nd scale, 190, um, and a six that I'm working on with the checkerboard nose. So I'd like to, I'd like to get that sucker done. The inside, the cockpit's already done. I just need to start gluing stuff together and get it ready to roll. But uh, anyway, that's all I've got on my bench. Just kind of having fun in the painting stage. I've got a, a couple other kits I might break out of the old. Um, there's that EA6A and then the, the SU-17 that are in the paint stage. So I'm, who knows, I might just keep painting and then uh, try to knock out a bunch all at once. But anyway, that is all. That's all I got on my bench. So uh, anyway, uh, again, good having everybody around so that we can all get caught up. And just chat about uh, stuff we got going on our benches. So, um, all right, cool. Well, um, just real quick before I forget, um, I'll just, again, go around the horn and uh, see if you guys actually bought anything uh, model-wise lately. So, D-Ran, did you buy anything while you were out in Australia? I bought nothing in Australia. What? You didn't go to any hobby shops all your work in the whole time? I, I did not go to a hobby shop. I did not. Man. I had one night in Sydney, and I got there, and I was... Uh, That's on set. I was, I was too damn tired. Man. So. Well, But uh, right. next time, I got some stuff mapped out. Don't get me on sad shit, mate. Uh, it's on sad, <laughs> chief. <laughs> hey, now, now speaking of... But our, uh, who, who all this is sort of off this subject a little bit. <laughs> Who's making the sidewalk sale on oh, Saturday? When, this Saturday? This Saturday. I'm I'll Man. be there. Who Me. else? Me. Okay. I can't be yep. there. So Frill and I and Darren, <laughs> you're gonna make it, right? Oh man, I want to. I uh, I'll get back to you. 
What? Yes. The, I, I don't know. The answer is been home well, like well, two days. The guy just come and, home from like eh, three man, weeks on the he's road. Playing man. catch up at home. Oh, man. Yeah. Come on, man. It's, it's his it's, wife it's, needs the grass cut. It's forty again. minutes away. We'll leave early. I, 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 we'll, we'll leave early to yeah, get there early, and we'll it. come home early. An hour. We'll be gone an hour. I'm not gonna make uh, it. I got a uh, a buddy of mine is retiring out of the navy uh, down there, oh, in Norfolk. Man. So I got to head down there for that. Uh, that's who is it, Whitey? Time, I'm so. tentative. He's, he, he's an E to O guy. I got to go down there for him, man. Yeah. Uh, Liam Hickey. He was a uh, AW in my squadron up at VP yeah. 26, yeah, and then. Uh, Darren, you're going to become an officer and uh, he's rolling out as an uh, as an O four E man. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, sweet. That's awesome. That's awesome. Cool. So, all right. Um, so Darren, you didn't get shit. Uh, well, I had stuff <laughs> waiting when I got home. Okay. Well, that what'd you have? What'd you what'd I you have? Counts, right. I, I got I got my new Duke Hawkins. Uh, F-E-G oh, book. that's a good one. I love this, those this Duke a, Hawkins books. This is going to help me out with my oh, main killer as yes. I'm uh, moving forward. Those are awesome. I, uh, they're expensive. See, I, they're like fifty bucks each, but yeah, they're, they're worth it. Cheap. They're not. They're cheap. worth it. I had a uh, Arma Hobby seventy second scale P thirty nine N weighted cool. in the mail, which is one of their new people. Just because it's an Arma Hobby so. kit, it's cool. Yeah. Don't you already have like four of those? Uh, <laughs> well, I've got. Wait a second. It's what a, are you doing with four of them? That's uh, you're breaking some rules there. Yeah. Well. You can do a group build once you get five. I or can. not group build, but a collection. You can do a collection when you get five. All right. Stop Jesus. encouraging. <laughs> Stop enabling. Uh, cool, man. What else? Neat things, one of the neat things I got, and I yeah, want to yeah, thank yeah, what Alex, else? Alexei over at ResKit. Uh, he, uh, uh, he sent over their F-111A, their 30-second scale escape capsule. Oh, cool. Uh, Stop it. And they sent it, asked me to do a review on it. Uh, Sweet. it came in the mail. It was here when I got back. So I'm going to be piecing that together here before too long. and doing at least a Good really deal, cool man. inbox with it at first. Yeah. And it's going into the queue to be built, but it's, I could tell you right now, it's pretty damn cool. Cool, man. Uh, it's a pack kit too, full of resin and all their 3d cockpit stuff and, uh, all the res kit stuff's in it. It's really cool. So you should get cool. Mr. Vark to sign the box. <laughs> yep, his name's on it. Mr. Old Jim Rotramel. Yep. So. <sighs> but, uh, cool, man. Cool stuff. Uh, uh, when's our next club meeting? I missed the one. I don't know. You all had one while I was gone, didn't you? We that did. Gets, yeah, because uh, we, we, yeah, we hold meetings um, whether <laughs> you make it or not. They're well, uh, that We need to change that. You, you know, know what? It, if only uh, there was what? a website that we could check. Yeah, the meeting dates and time. Oh man! So that was a poon jab. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Um, fifteen June. Okay. So uh, I'll bring it up Friday to the uh, build day. So. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah. It, unfortunately, I'm not going to make the build day either. What? Well, I may. I may. I may stop by for uh, lunch. Um, but I'm not going to be there for the build day. Oh man! All right. Whatever. <laughs> so well, you know, but, we got we got. I've got this this guidance that i i must get the car washed and i must there's a there's a list up on the fridge i must yeah, it's complete called the wife's to-do list yes before <laughs> she gets back from oh. the airport with her friend mm. i have to have those completed and right. and at least one of those she wants me to do friday so it's uh because she wants right. she want does she doesn't want it to be weathered gotcha take it to the car wash up here <laughs> Gotcha. All right. Well, that's all I've got. Cool. Thanks, D Ran. Yeah, man. Tim, you pick up anything lately? I did. Uh oh. I bought I bought a fine actually it showed up this week, a fine molds um F four E phantom. Oh, how is that scale. Scale. It, it is beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. Wicked, it's wicked cool. Yeah, it's it's almost it's basically their F four J kit with some modified parts. And it's uh, it's awesome. Um, the the F four J has been a, a beauty to build, so I want to do it again, only this time with a different kind of Phantom. And cool, I, I went ahead and uh, pulled the trigger on their seat belt kit for Phantoms and Crusaders. Uh, they provide you um, four sets of uh, seat belts for the ejection seats. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try that and see how that looks in there. Cool. I think that's gonna look good. 
So I've now, got some are, of those fine molds for uh, the uh, 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 World War II aircraft. And I think, uh, Frill, I, you'd use some of those two in one of your builds. And, and they're I, really cool. I did. I did it on the um, Tamiya P-38. My tip for that, though, is I would put them in warm water, boiling water to kind of soften them up. Yeah. yeah because they say you can like, bend them. Well, no, because they, they, they cannot. They're straight, right? On a sprue. Or are they molded, folded over and stuff? The I'll ones for the look. P-38 were um, just molded straight. straight. Yep. And so you had to heat them up to get them to conform. And you can try and bend them if you want, but you can just dip it in boiling water to kind of soften it up and then just bend them. Right. Yeah. That's good gouge. But yeah, they're they're great. I like them. Cool. cool. That that is all I've purchased. Ooh. All right. No no new um 3D printers or anything like that again. I Just did a get a shipping notice <laughs> on a 3D oh. printer. Oh um, man. But uh it's not going to ship for I think it ships next week. Okay. Next week? No, 2 weeks. It ships in 2 weeks. Cool, man. Good deal. Well, we'll be anxious to to um, come bug you and see how that thing works and have us. Uh, you can be our printer for our parts and stuff that we need. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Alrighty. How about you, man? Did you buy anything recently? Decals, man. Uh oh, decals. Yep. Oh, snap. Um, stickers. Stickers. Yep. Stickers. stickers. Um, <clears throat> Caracal. They, they've come out with a couple of new sheets. Okay, cool. And. One of them was um, new B-52 in 72nd scale. Yeah, man. Uh, so I grabbed that sheet. They have a Loring Air Force Base 40-second bomb wing bird on there that I want to do. And um, so I grabbed that sheet. And in the meantime, um, picked up a couple of the others. Uh, they, let's see, an F-15 sheet. a um, Actually, a, a one 144th scale C-131, the Convair. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Cool, it, man. It had a Cape Cod uh, ah. Mass Air National Guard uh, lit livery on there. So I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll grab that. It looks kind of cool. Um, so, yeah, decals all I have Sweet. jumped on in the last couple of weeks here. Um, cool, man. Good deal. Speaking of uh, decals, that, reminds, that I did get something else that was waiting for me. And these are these are pretty cool. Speaking of Air Force. Oh man! Yeah, those are actually a couple of those are kind of cool because they're test. They're yeah. test. What are they for the birds. listeners that aren't that's watching the video? Yeah. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> Talk more. They, show they're, less. They're the two Bob's F-16. Uh, present. Uh, uh, their test. Their test ad, uh, anniversary uh, markings. Uh, they're really cool. I really like the uh, orange, white, and black. Yeah, that's um, the one uh, Dirks did because he did a mod. Yeah, and uh, he did that bottom jet on there. The, yeah, uh, U.S. Air Force Test Pilot School, and uh, so these come from two bobs. Uh, really cool. I got two sets of those. I forgot to uh, mention that uh, before, but cool. Sorry. No, that's okay. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go back in my hole. Go back in the hole. All right. For real. Don't tell me you didn't buy anything. No, no, I did. But like, why? Okay. It was okay. just decals. I got the. Uh, no, I'll still get my... something. Yeah, I picked up um, Furball's uh, Growler Anthology two th- Part Two, oh, Three, and Four because I didn't have nice. those. So I Very nice. Pick those up. Cool. Yeah. <clears throat> Good deal, man. But that was it. Just the one uh, sheet of decals. Oh, no, three of them. Those yeah, stickers. Three of them. Okay. Yeah, three sheets. Cool, and then cool. I think I got a Growler like brewing soon at some point one of these years that I want to do. So. <laughs> what'd you just say man yeah gotta, what did you just say I got you said you got a growler brewing i bet our our english folks are laughing their well off that that was actually a pun on the people that know you know it's called a growler and what yeah, in no, the no. Navy we refer to a growler as that's why it was hilarious when they decided to name the eatg that i know that, man all, i'm sure all, they're like everyone was like what the hell <laughs> there you go to our listeners you know navy lingo a growler yeah. use yeah. your imagination of what it could be oh my goodness uh i don't, I don't yeah. know should we we probably shouldn't tell them let them go figure it out what we meant when we say yeah we will let them we'll let them figure it out we're not gonna say anything yeah but that's it <laughs> cool man all right as for me 
I was a little light on the old uh, mail call section for myself, which is a good thing because the Lionheart and the Texas trip like broke me almost, man. I don't have any, I don't have any, I don't have any money for gnats. <laughs> Um, I did pick up one of those 72nd scale uh, P8s from Sprue Brothers on their lightning deal. It was only 109 bucks. So that you was. You made a wise decision. I made a yeah. wise decision. Pause. Darren, you're muted. Um, yes. Unpause. Wise decision with my P8. Now, 109. I mean, I'll sell it for way more than that. You know? Ouch. <laughs> I'll sell it for. <laughs> sell it for. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I've been wanting one of those anyway. That's a, that's just, you know, that's a, you see them every day and it just, that's a cool, that's a cool, that's a unique, cool kit. So anyway, that's all I got. Just that. All right. Um, oh, wait. Oh, I got one more thing. I'm sorry. Look at me. Way, way, way too premature in my, um, in my, in my, um, in my purchases. Yes. I'm sorry. Brain fart. <laughs> so it happens to the best of us. Um, I picked up this funky fine molds, 48 scale KI 15 Babs. What the hell is this stupid ass looking? It's neat. It's really cool. It's like this, it's this cool looking, uh, like pre world war two, like 1935, 36, something right. 39, whatever. Um, Japanese like, um, aircraft. It is awesome looking, man. It's super cool. So I got I got it from Japan. The guy shipped it pretty quick. It's brand new, you know, still in the wrap. Actually, I I unwrapped it. I looked at it because it's really cool. So it's a uh, it's got this funky camo on it. And again, I'm just kind of smitten by the whole Japanese crazy camo schemes. So anyway, I I picked that up and then God bless Tim. Tim, I I asked the group, you know, um, what my compressor is getting ready to go kaput. So. Tim told me about this Sparmax compressor that he had and he turned it on. It's really quiet. It has, I got the one with the, so anyway, I got a new compressor, so it's on its way. It's got the two ports and a water trap and a gauge and all this good stuff. So I'll be anxious to, to, I'll let you guys how, how I'll let you know how the, the, the Sparmax compressor that I bought, how it works. Uh, my last one has lasted for almost 30 years. So a little over 30 years actually. So, um, hopefully I get that much use out of this one because it was a little bit more, but I think it think it'll be worth it. Anyway. All right. Enough of that. Moving on. Hello, model geeks. This is Burt Kinsey of Detail and Scale to tell you about our newest publication, F-105 Thunder Chief in Detail and Scale, written by yours truly and illustrated by Rock Rosak and Jim Rotram. This is not simply an expanded and updated edition of our original Detail and Scale series book on the Thud. Instead, it is an all-new publication. It really took a lot of research and effort, but I'm very pleased with how it turned out, and I know you will be too. In fact, I think it's among the very best titles Detail and Scale has ever produced. Overall, there are almost 300 color photographs and illustration, more than 90% of which are in color. Following the introduction, the Thunder Chief History Chapter reviews the development and operational use of the F-105, including its extensive role in the war in Southeast Asia. Next is a chapter that covers each of the Thunder Chief variants in more detail, beginning with the first YF-105As and going through the F-105F and F-105G Wild Weasels. Extended coverage is provided on the Wild Weasels to include an informative text that clears up some of the misconceptions about these important variants. And both general and detailed photographs illustrate all of the changes made to the aircraft as various systems were added and updated. Next comes a chapter on the armament carried by the Thunder Chief, and this includes more than 30 detailed photographs and illustrations. The focus of all Detail and Scale series books is that of the physical details of the aircraft. And the Thunder Chief Detail Chapter contains more than 145 detailed photographs and illustrations, more than 90% of which are in color. There are 26 cockpit photos alone covering all production variants. And more than 90% of the photos in the Thunder Chief Details Chapter were taken of operational aircraft. The modeler section covers all of the Thunder Chief kits from 1144 scale through 132nd scale, and it points out the pros and cons of each. 
The backfeeding that needs to be made to the kits in order to build early F-105s in the natural metal and silver lacquer schemes are also covered in detail. Like all of our Detail and Scale publications, F-105 Thunder Chief in Detail and Scale is available in both printed and digital editions, with both the Kindle and Apple formats being available for the digital editions. To learn more and to order yours, visit our website at www.detailandscale.com. Happy bottling from Detail and Scale. Now back to the Model Geeks podcast. All right. Why don't... Now this is uh this is our next our next segment of the show is a geek news. So I don't know. I haven't really heard any geek news or anything on Facebook or any discussions at all anywhere about anything. Have you guys heard uh, anything? It's been, it's been pretty so, quiet out there in the kind of quiet. quiet model. World. I mean, I'm, I'm, it, it's been so quiet. I almost think that I'm like freeloading on something. I don't know. I don't know. I think. I think yeah. that's the hobbies, you know, it's, there's just, it's just, it is probably totally dead. Cause there's just no discussions on any <laughs> of the forums or podcasts so or anything. Anyway. So quiet. Um, obviously we're teasing just a smidge. Um, we're, you know, of course everybody heard about, um, the, uh, president of IPMS USA. We'll just call it a kerfuffle. There's a, a little kerfuffle. bit of a little, little bit of a kerfuffle there. <laughs> and, um, anyway, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about this. I think that, um, you know, our, our goal here with the model geeks is to be positive and talk about things. And I, hopefully the bottom line is, you know, number one, you know, we're all, we're talking about the, the article that, um, the IPMS president had written. Um, and it wasn't received well, um, uh, by a lot of people. Um, but I think the, what we're, what we're trying to look at is, you know, every time something sort of negative happens or hopefully there will be something positive that comes out of it. So, um, you know, just again, kind of want to get y'all's thoughts just real quick. Again, we don't want to spend too much time talking about this, but I think, I think it's safe to say that, um, uh, he, he's probably regretting his decision to, to, to run that particular article. So what are you, what are you guys thoughts on, uh, the article kind of, and what do we do to move forward? You know, that's the big thing is let's apply, let's give some solutions some recommended solutions maybe of, of what we think, how we move forward and how IPMS continues to, to grow rather than lose folks. Well, solutions is the right word. I mean, you, yeah. you brought that right, 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 up, right out front there. Um, you know, in the interim, an apology, uh, from from the president, Dave Lockhart was was, was issued as well. Um, yeah, you know, and because, warranted, right? I, good yeah. on him for doing that. You know, right? Uh, kudos to kudos to him for that. And then also, um, if you get the chance, listen to the uh, which I'm sure by the time we drop our episode, everyone has probably listened to um, the uh, Scale Model podcast with Stewart. He had an interview with them um, on Monday, uh, Memorial Day for us in the here yeah. in the U.S. And, um, you know, with Dave laid out, you know, his thoughts behind the editorial that he wrote. And for me, what, what came, uh, surprisingly to me right away was, you know, within five minutes of listening to him talking that interview was the, the social media, um, the, yeah. the lack of understanding of that. And you would think an organization like IPMS USA would have people at the helm and not not the president necessarily that doesn't have to be him but his board members his advisors whatever you know like any other administration there are other people in the chain of uh you know we're military guys so the chain of command that that would be you know hey social media is a thing have you heard about it <laughs> yeah you know and, and so that's yeah. where you yeah. know and that was not just from the interview, but even previous to that, in some of his responses, were like, well, you know, I'm happy to see people are reading the journal. And one of the responses in one of the forums was like, no, dude, I'm down in Australia. I'm reading this on the Internet, man. Yeah. Like, I'm not reading this yeah. from the journal. Um, I, yeah. I got that news. I got that news at 36,000 right. feet on you're, my phone. You know, <laughs> you're, you're traveling home from Australia. So that that came as a as a, a pretty big surprise to me. And, and, and one of the reasons why for me it did be, is because, you know, we personally know, uh, John Bonatti from the triple P and, yeah. um, Mr. Booth as well, the, who, you know, these guys, 
are there advising these folks of, hey, we need to step into this realm. Uh, we need to advance our organization into these newer platforms. So it's yeah. not like they're not being advised. And it's not like they're blind to this. Um, you know, so so that it, hopefully, you know, what I walk away from it now that, you know, we went through the whole, you know, long holiday weekend here in the U.S. And this was all over the Internet. And, you know, now that it's here, here we are Tuesday evening recording our uh, session here. And I walk away from it going, OK, I hope and I'm sure that. I don't even like the word change. Oh, change is coming. Yeah, like, you know, that, I, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I hope uh, some um, light has been shown on 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 what on what needs to not what needs to happen, but what is what is what the organization is capable of. Is yeah. probably a better way to look at it, you know. Stop ignoring yeah. what is out there. You shouldn't be surprised that Facebook is a hotbed of hobby of <laughs> model of the scale modeling um, yeah. uh, world, or and that, it's um, just one hotbed. There's more right, than one, right, just one social small, media like, platform, you know. So and there are there are lots of folks in other places. Yeah, exactly, and 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 so that that that's what I walk away from this whole thing with is that okay, you, you know. Lessons learned, you know, let's, yeah. uh, let's, let's debrief. I hope, and I hope that whole organization is getting together this week or this weekend or whenever they have their, their meetings and, and going, okay, let's debrief this and, and break it down. And, and, and where do we go from here type of thing? And, and that's, so what I'm thinking, you know, despite all the negativity over the weekend that we saw, I see positive in the end. That, that, that's my thoughts on the matter. Yeah, I, I'll 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 echo that. Um, I am hopeful that this will be the impetus for change. Um, whether we use the term change or not, at least this will be the impetus to um, help bring IPMS where it needs to be to properly um, ex uh, ass access or uh, access is not the right word, um, but grow the grow the population of members. Yeah, from a younger generation that is in a lot of different places besides reading magazines. Because uh, let's face it, the generation that's young today generally don't read magazines. Um, you know, and that so we gotta. Um, I mean, ultimately, my takeaway was, um, what does IPMS offer the twenty-something, thirty-something new modeler, or even the uh, the, the teenager, um, that they can't get somewhere else. And that's the, um, that's what IPMS needs to bring to the table. Um, in addition to yeah. some of the things they do today for, you know, certainly they provide a, a, a structure for competition and a few other things. And, uh, you, you know, we could argue until the cows come home on what changes need to occur there, but yeah, uh, I think that's what, like I said, my takeaway is this: this could be the impetus for change, and I, I'm I'm looking forward to that, and I I am positive that uh, we're going to see some good things as a result. Yeah, and I, and I think it's it's change for the better, right? It's it's right. whether you, whatever word that you want to use, it's whether it's you know evolve, change, you know adapt, you know whatever. It's it's we all want IPMS. I think they all would wish that. You know, we get is open, open the eyeball, open the aperture, open the the think outside the box. You know, how do you bring in those younger viewers, uh, viewers, younger modelers, younger people? Because, um, you know, when I go to shows, I don't see a whole lot of young folks. I see a whole bunch of old dudes, you know, me included. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not young anymore. Um, and it's just it's a it's, you know, it's how do you reach out to, to more people? Cause that's how you're going to, you know, grow the hobby is not by, um, discounting people. It's by, you know, reaching out and welcoming everybody, whether you're an IPMS member or not. Um, it's welcoming everybody. And I, and I think, you know, from reading his article and listening to the podcast that he was on, I mean, he, you know, he acknowledges the fact that he, he made a mistake. Um, you know, he probably got let a little emotion slip into the, 
to his article, which is never a good thing. Um, you know, and it's and it's just and you know, from ultimately listening to him respond, you know, he did the absolute opposite of what he was trying to do. And I mean, he's only he's a human being. He made a mistake. I kind of don't feel like we should crucify him for it, especially since he seems like he's been willing to say, hey, I made a mistake. Like, I want to do things right. But when I hear that, you know, he's he's not really big into the social media aspect and, you know, that's just not his thing. And, you know, he, he, well, I hope it is now. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it was more you saying know? that he didn't understand it. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, he so. doesn't understand. He's not involved with it. But yeah. it's that I think this should be again. It's it's sometimes out of the worst situations, good things happen. And mm-hmm. and I think we're all hoping that this is one of those where, yep, this was an uncomfortable, difficult situation um, for Dave. And I hope that he learns from it and kind of we all kind of learn from it. And because, uh, you know, sometimes when you're pointing fingers at people, well, you got three fingers pointing right back at yourself. And but I think it's important to take take a step back, you know, see, you know, what drove you to write an article like that. And then, you know, what's the the reason behind it? And uh, make sure and, and and reach out and listen to people around you, not just um, a, a don't don't write letters like this and think like this in a vacuum. It's important to enlist the help of your entire board, whether it's some of the uh, old, don't just listen to the older folks, listen to the younger folks, too. You know what I mean? It's it's reach out to everybody and be open minded and willing to to listen to new ideas and move forward. But. You know, I love IPMS. I've loved, I've been an IPMS member for years. You know, I, I go to shows and I judge at every show now and I've been judging at Nats for a while and I pay my dues and I, I, we have now, you know, we're starting our own show with PaxCon, which I'm super excited about and it's a ton of work and it's going to all be worth it. And so, yeah, you know, the article, I'm kind of like, huh, you know, I, I, I feel like I'm, pulling my weight here you know i you know and so i when i when i read the article i'm like well you know that didn't really sit well with me but you know hearing from him now that he's you know he's the apology and and he's willing to sort of run the gauntlet at nats which you know hopefully he doesn't have to do that but you know i I do appreciate his him reaching out um and uh, being able being willing to talk about it and hopefully again learn from it and move past it you know, make IPMS better. So who knows? Maybe out of all of this, the kerfuffle is the impetus for um, positive change and um, involvement of IPMS. So. You know, <clears throat> what's this internet thing that they're talking about? I've never heard of that before. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> you know, and unfortunately, the internet is like father time, right? The internet and father time are undefeated. And it's forever going to be out there. And I will say that, you know, I can kind of see where he's coming from. He's trying to get more involvement in the the weeds of IPMS, your local chapters and that kind of thing. But I think his delivery was a little off in what he was trying to get across as his point. And, you know, he did come out and do the apology. Yeah, I, was, I listened to it today. And, uh, you know, I mean, kudos on him for, you know, making yeah. himself available for that. And I believe one of the things they, I don't know if they're, thinking about doing it or are going to do it is possibly having like some round table discussions at the Nats where IPMS members can come and talk to him, you know, face to face about his comment, you know, about his yep. expose piece that he wrote. Yeah. So. I, I, I don't think that they need to like, cause at first I thought, well, maybe they should have like a, you know, when we do our, like we do our, our seminar that we're going to do with, you know, TPS, you know, paint schemes or whatever, where we have a whole room and we're just, we're up there, where people can ask us questions like that. I was like, you know, maybe they should just do that with him. Just have him up there and have a, basically a seminar or a, however, whatever you want to call it, a session, Q and a session, Q and a session with him. But I, I feel like that'd be putting the guy on the span. Like, no, you know, I, mean, no, I think, I think he wants I, to, I would, I would have the whole board in the NCC folks yeah, up there. They exactly. Be, there you go. Whitey, the whole know, board, that, that should be a yeah. regular part of the, of the convention. Yes, to every have the, have the board up there meeting yep. and, you know and taking questions and, and answers from the folks and listening to their yep. concerns right there in the present not, not like over a, an email not you know i mean yeah. that, that that should be a, i think that's, that's a great not part idea. of a, a convention is kind of weird to me man now that's that a great idea about it 
like on Friday night, you know, for like an hour and a half, have a have an open like open town mic. hall kind of Q thing it, where yeah. the members, right? Because they are, mo- you know, what they what they're saying, you know, modelers by modelers for modelers by modelers. Well, yeah. where are you going to? There you go. Yeah. You know, there are your there is your your target base of which yeah. I think that's a great idea. I think that's a great idea. Hopefully, some of the guys hear that and can make that happen where they have not just the president, but everybody, vice yeah. president, secretary, the editor, the board, have them up the there NCC, and, and get them up. There, there. you go. There you go. Get Absolutely. them up there. And, and yeah. yeah. And, uh, now, another it, positive that come out of listening to the interview was that he did say that they're going to appoint a social media coordinator. That's wow. Brilliant. Yeah. Smart. There you uh, go. Yeah. Welcome to the dance. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. you know, but no, I, I mean, and, and I don't mean that disparagingly, but you, I would, and, think and whoever that it would, is needs to needs to be sure they post the models that they build. Yeah. What do you yeah. mean? Just well, okay. Do we want a do we want a social media expert who's not a modeler? No, 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 no. I'm sure it'll be a model. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, um, should be like in the in the in the in the requirements. Uh, must be a model. I, I <laughs> would, must I be would under hope must be under thirty. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah. You don't want somebody who's well, like seventy five. Probably, you probably. Yeah, uh, you know, probably eighty. Can't put an age thing on there. That some of the, some know of the how other, to use some of the other things that come out of uh, the discussion. Uh, um, I I don't recall the gentleman's name right now, but on one of the uh, forums was uh, he had he had a. This guy, he come, he was coming out of the corporate side of the side of the uh, world here, and um, but one of the, he talked about the journal, and probably yeah. them getting rid of the journal, and, and I was, I was, I was, I'm a hundred go digital with that. Go digital. Not only yeah, you know, go digital. The cost savings, the work amount of work that they could be eliminated by having the do it, do it a hundred percent digital. You know, yeah, I'm sorry for the folks, you know, and he kind of says in his editorial of uh, this guy's writing, you know, he was like, hey, sorry for the folks that that aren't on board with with reading stuff online. But, you know, bottom line is for an organization like IPMS, you know, 4,000, 5,000 member organization, you know what? Save the money in, in producing that magazine. That is by the time it hits your doorstep, whatever, quote, news is in there is, is already news. It's already. Yeah. yeah. Half the reviews, it's out of date. the kits have already been built by some of us, you know, by the time it hits your doorstep. So it, it, it's dated. Move on from that. Save the money. Yeah. Save the work that goes in, into that, the resources that go into that. Um, and another another thing that was brought up was, um, I think I kind of talked about this before, special interest groups are huge over like Telford and uh, some of the European clubs and shows. And the emphasis on SIGs is just not here, not here in the U.S. Not at all. And and I, it, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm a fan of SIGs just because I think it's um, uh, they're pretty cool. You know, you, you you know you. I mean, we essentially participating that by doing group builds that we do for the for the show. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, doing this Japanese thing last time, doing the A4 thing, uh, the Triple P with their uh, Sherman. The, that's special interest group stuff right there that they can be jumping on and and um and and emphasizing for shows to have club displays etc you know that's a big part of our PaxCon show coming up we want clubs to come and you know cuz god knows there's tons of models out there that don't like the aspect of being in a quote contest we get that come to right. our show anyway and show us your work put it on the table have your club set up, hang out with your boys behind the behind the bench uh, or behind the table, uh, have a cooler of beers. We don't care. Uh, do, have, do whatever. <laughs> yeah, it, I don't you think know. the venue will allow that, though. Yeah, well, <laughs> you can always whatever. sneak it in. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you know what I mean? And, and that's, you know, that's some of the stuff I see out of the Europe. Uh, I, I can I, I say European, but let's just talk Telford. Because like, you see the SIG presence at Telford is huge. and um, you know those clubs being there with their displays is just that that, that that's the community right there. Um, competition, put that let's put it on the back burner, man. You know because a lot of people aren't fans of it. Yeah, yeah I think that's I think, true. I, I know that I'd heard just some some discussions. I think that, you know it would be a huge. I think it would be a huge plus if nationals went to gold, silver, bronze. I think it would bring in more people because a lot of people that I've talked to are like, you know, 
you got 50 models in a category, people are just like, I, I don't even want to bring anything. I don't want to enter anything. And and these are decent modelers. And uh, I think a gold, silver, bronze would be, I don't care if they charge us a little bit more just to help pay for awards or whatever. But I think a gold, silver, bronze, that's the whole reason why we went with gold, silver, bronze and PaxCon to bring in more modelers to help grow the hobby. And so, you know, I, I know some people are hardcore first, second, third. You know, I used to be, and I changed my mind because I think that it's, I do. I think I listen to the people around me and I'm glad that we're doing gold, silver, bronze. I think it's going to bring in more people. Plus we got kick-ass awards. So it'll be, it'll be good times. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. All right. Well, again, uh, I think this is, uh, we just wanted to kind of touch on, on this topic just real quick, you know, don't want to spend too much time on it. I think it's a, a lot of other, um, podcasts might spend some more time on it, but, um, you know, Dave was out there. He was on the the Scale Model podcast. You know, gave his apology. It seems pretty open to uh, trying to you know evolve and, and change with the times here. And I hope he does. And I hope again that this is a uh, an impetus um, for positive change. And you know, wish him well and wish uh, all the IPMS uh, board members well. And uh, can't wait to see everybody, everybody uh, at nationals. And I'm sure there'll be some some more discussion um, as we get closer to Nats. So anyway, but guys, thanks for the, for all the inputs. Um, all right, moving on. PaxCon. El Presidente, you want to give us the old PaxCon update? I would love to give you a PaxCon update. Sweet. Floor is yours. Um, yeah, 130 days as of this recording. Um, we're going to be doing a show. 7th of October, 2023. Hollywood Volunteer Fire Department in uh, Hollywood, uh, Maryland. It's down Route 235. Uh, start on Route 5 from the Beltway at uh, Washington, D.C., head south. You won't be able to miss it. You just keep <laughs> going down, stay yeah. on the four lanes, and then you'll, there'll be this big uh, uh, volunteer fire department on the right as you get farther down and the uh, the buildings get further apart. And there'll be a sign that says, <laughs> keep there's going. a model contest show right here. Yeah, it is <laughs> literally... Right there. Yeah. 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 Right on the highway. And it'll, it'll, there'll be signs. Uh, we'll probably put the first sign uh, a mile out to give you a heads up that, hey, you're about a mile out. It'll be on the marquee. It'll oh, be on the marquee. Three quarters of a mile. Call the ball. Oh, there yeah. you go. Three quarters call the of ball. a mile. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's that a good is sign. Good. Maybe we can uh, borrow uh, one of those uh, field carry landing practice Fresno lights from the base and have a have it out there on the side of 235, man. Or, or in, yeah, in the, it, right at the, uh, when you, when you get to about a hundred feet from the turn, it just starts, yeah. it, it just every now and then flashes to get, gets folks attention. That, or we'll, uh, we'll just like, it's not a wave off that that's telling you, come on in. Like on the, uh, and you know, like we could have like poster board or whatever with the sayings, you know, have, you yeah. know, just like, you know, every, I don't know. Half you're in the group. Quarter. Yeah, you're in the you're group. In the group. Right, nice. Call the ball. I'm, I'm blah, writing blah, it blah, down. Yeah. I'm writing it down. I'm at the 90. <laughs> yeah, that'll Call be good. Ball. Yeah. Yeah, at the 90. Oh, man, you guys are great. I got to I gotta look all this, all yeah, the, be, uh, the phrases. Then, that, yeah, just right where Gabe. you turn. Yeah, the, what do you the say? Road that, on the final. Road, yeah. Like the road that you turn on, it'd be like, okay, three wire. You come yeah, there you go. We'll have okay, three wire. Yeah. Codwood cutout guy with the paddles. <laughs> go. Yeah. No, the the uh the inflatable guy that um uh, you know Mr. <laughs> Eric thing with the arms oh, flying yeah. Stick some paddles <laughs> on his hands, yeah. <laughs> paddles on his hands and a yellow uh white jersey. There you go. There you go. Kicking his leg oh. out, you know, his hands yeah. bailing. More rudder, more rudder. I mean, yeah. Because I'm not gonna lie to the folks that have never been down this way, when you do make that turn off a five and head this way it, you do kind of feel like you're driving forever and and i mean yeah. god it's knows i've lived here since 2008 and whenever we come back from dc my wife always in favor, invariably she always says she's like this drive is forever yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's only like no, it's, it's like not. a half hour it's like a half hour from waldorf you know maybe a little bit did more we than just half pass hour. a buggy yeah, yeah. There, there's did this one sign yeah buggy? there's this one sign that says leonard town like 30 miles or 35 miles. And every yeah. time we pass that, my wife flips it off. You know, and she's like, <laughs> my God, we've been driving forever. Oh, that's funny. Oh yeah. Sorry, it's folks. It. We're not trying to turn you off. Yeah. No, it's good. Yeah. It's, 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 come here. Yeah, it, 
It's going to be worth the drive down. It's going to be an awesome show. Yeah. Once you get here, plenty of hotels, plenty of bars, plenty of restaurants, plenty of good times, folks. Yes. There's also the uh, PAX Museum. Uh, You'll certainly want to see that while you're here. And uh, it's it's just a little further down the road on the other side of uh, uh, Lexington Park. Uh, and you'll enjoy that. That's a that's a good day. If you really want to do it right, you come in on Friday and you you spend uh, either spend Friday or sa- or Sunday at the museum and uh, spend Saturday, of course, at PaxCon. Cool. Um, let's see. Lastly, uh, just an update on the decal sheet. Uh, if uh, we mentioned on the, at the last podcast, uh, with the decal sheet's been ordered. It's en route. And uh, when the decal sheet shows up, uh, our plan is that if you register a model, uh, whether it's competition or display only, if you show up with a model to put on the table, um, then we're going to um, we're going to hand you a decal sheet as part of your uh, check in and registration process. So it'll be a free decal sheet. And on the sheet is going to be uh, some logos so that uh, in the po- three popular scales, 172, 148 and 132. Um, and the logos will be the the ones that go on the tail um, or fuselage that show things like Stripe University, Naval Air Test Center, that kind of stuff. And it won't be letters because we figure you can get letters, but it'll be the uh, the logos that are are very difficult to make yourself. Um, so we've we've got those, and uh, there should be enough to do two aircraft in each scale. Um, and there's uh, multiple periods, so it'll be. Um, you know, it's not just one era. It'll be multiple eras from the uh, 60s, 70s, and 80s. And it might even be 90s and 2000s in there. Cool. And that's all I've got with PaxCon update. Well, that's an awesome update. Thanks, Tim. I think we're all, all of, I know all of us were pretty, pretty friggin' excited about having PaxCon. And I'm told, I mean, we all live, what, a couple miles from, from the venue. So, yeah. It's going to be a good time. It'll be great. Lots of and lots. I of walk great. around with jazz hands all the time <laughs> as we get close. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's going to be fun. Be good times. Anyway, well, thanks again, Tim. Appreciate the update. Okay, let's. Uh, what about new kits and stuff, products, and stuff on the street? So I, I've got a few. I'll just roll with real quick. Um, the one I am most excited about is this laminar flow design, thirty second scale Mark fourteen conversion for the Tamiya kit. So that is the one that I'm just, I cannot wait to see it. I've seen some test shots on the old book of face and it looks, it looks really, really nice. So I'm, I'm excited about seeing, I don't know how, I don't know when it's going to come out, but I'll keep following it. And, uh, as soon as I, um, can, can find out when it's coming out, I'll push out to everybody. Also, Furball's got some really cool new decal sets, uh, for growlers and, uh, for the A6. So check those out. Another one I'm really excited about is the new border model, uh, 135th scale B5 into Kate. I, I don't know why I'm so jazzed about it. I guess because I'm on the Japanese kick and it's a Kate that's coming out, 35th scale. Cool. Well, and not then, only that, they're also the Akagi bridge in 35 scale yes. to go with it. Yeah. That's cool. That's That'll awesome. be cool. Yeah, man. Be awesome. Dude, and, I need to share a photograph with you of a B5 in Kate at Midway that has got a paint scheme on it that you would love to do. Oh, you got to send it to me. You got to send it to me. <laughs> cool. And then the last one that I have is this Magic Factory 48 scale F4U-1A uh, and, and, and two, I think it's two kits yeah. in yeah. one. And um, I mean, they look really nice. My only thing is I'm like, why do you put the, you know, the, um, the gun covers are open. What, close that. Keep them closed. And if you want them open, then maybe have like the little indentations on the underside of the wing where you would have to cut. But I I'm just, not, I, I, you yeah. and Gabe have been going on about that. I, I, I think looking at Doesn't those kids, I, th- I think they're going to lay right in there and be a think so? Yeah. All right. Yep. All right. Look, they're looking pretty damn sharp, man. Those okay. Kids. Well, it, it does. It looks, I'm like, well, I'm buying one because it just looks one amazing. The birdcage one in particular just looks really cool. Yeah. And I'm yep. sure, or I hope, that they just, that they roll on with the entire Corsair uh, family from yeah. that. What if they yeah. give you two different sets of wing panels right there? Of one that's got the gun base closed and one that's open. Well, that would be cool. Yeah, that would I be great, they, too. I yeah. wish they did that. Yeah. I mean, you just have to provide, what, a wing top? Right. Yeah. 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 That's why I mean. Yep. Just the wing top. Yeah. 
yeah. of closed weapon or gun yeah, base. Man. Cool. Um, but what other kit in 48 skill has ever offered that too? When you think about yeah. Corsair kits that are out there. Just the to me, you know? I mean, I guess Hasegawa's got kits and to me has got kits, but, but they don't what, have I mean with, with the yeah. with the, Not weapons, with the gun doors. With the gun doors, no. open, you know. No, I don't yeah, think yeah, none yeah. of them have. You gotta get the Berlin. It's a unique set it's, or on the Corsair, it's kind of a unique setup, man. You know, the, yeah. the way those things are. Um yeah. I don't know. Yeah, looking at the test shots of it, I think it looks Look fantastic. Awesome. Uh, yeah. I'm looking forward yeah. to it. I'm a Corsair fan for sure. Yeah. Group build. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'm in. That sounds good to me. You know? Cool. Uh, anything else? You guys, uh, any notes or news or anything from yeah. stuff out on the street? Uh-oh. Thrill? Um, Minibase. I saw on Facebook the other day that Minibase has a 148 scale F16 coming out and they have some right. CAD drawings of their their Wait, cockpit and it looks pretty cool. I saw cool. the 3D printed stuff and I, that's when I sent the text to the group I was like is what is this? Is this a detail set? And then Gabe's like no, it's it's a 3D print of what they're trying to do with the kit and I was yeah, like man. holy shnikes. I don't know if you guys have, you know, you listeners out there have seen what this um, F-16 looks, it looks unbelievable, man. Unreal. So that's going to be a line yeah. of F-16 kits, not just details. No right. It's, it's a whole, it's a whole new kit. Whole kit. Oh my God. Yeah. Man. Yeah. If only, yeah. I mean, you know, crazy to think that a, maybe even like a two seat F-16 would sell. Hmm. Oh man. I don't know. I need one for my test pilot school. Yeah, Stickers. man. There you go. You Stickers. The, the Connecticut is out there, man. It is. I'll be anxious to see that one. I'll be anxious yeah. to see that one. I'll probably put one of those. Well, we that one. I'll, the, I'll, we I'll saw the sprue that. shots up there. In yeah, Fairfax. Pretty good. Look yep. pretty good. I think they look pretty good. Cool. Anybody else got anything? Anything new? Yes. Yeah, so an update in seventy second scale. Oh uh, man! On, on the street. Oh, here it comes with an update. An update on a seventy second scale. Go ahead. Tim. <laughs> On the street, the Edward uh, BF 109F uh, in the uh, uh, F2, F4 special edition. Uh, two kits, 14 schemes. Uh, it is on the street, folks. Um, Sweet. It, and it, so, certainly by the time you read this, uh, I, there are probably going to be a number of folks in the U.S. who have already purchased it and it's en route. Cool. Um, and from what I understand, Edward has also got a few overtrees that they can, you can throw into the, into the uh, uh, purchase if you want. Um, I'm hoping that, uh, I, I believe Sprout Brothers tends to get, uh, over trees from Edward. So I'm hoping that, uh, they've got them at, at, uh, nationals. And I, I plan to pick yep. up, uh, I'm now after looking at the, the decal sheet and the 14 schemes, I, I'm definitely going to have to get three sets, maybe <laughs> more. Cool. Um, cause it, it literally has all, all of the markings that I ever wanted for yeah. an F2, F4 and, and, as I understand it, there's actually one F1 um, in the kit, set of decals, so cool. or in the boxing. So if you wanted to, you could do that one. So I, I'm looking forward to that. And then the, uh, uh, the only other update I want to provide is uh, the last podcast I mentioned, the Platts F16A. Um, uh, folks, you might want to suspend the cats on that one. The, <laughs> uh, well, the, the latest set of um, CAD renderings, um, seem to indicate and built up models seem to indicate that it's a die cast and not necessarily a model kit. Yeah. What? The, the, uh, the panel lines are like <sighs> trenches and it's like oh, either, man. either they went from CAD drawings to output and decided they were going to make toys. Um, you know, shut sorry, the front sorry, door. Yeah. Sorry to all the, the die cast guys out there, but, um, it's, it's not quite. Uh, I mean, it was announced at a toy fair, so um, you know, let's let's be fair to Platts. But uh, it, yeah, as modelers, uh, you know, we might want to yeah. pause on that one and uh, see if we can't get a little more information before we get too excited. Gotcha. And it, and that's all I've got. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, Tim. Well, I think that'll do it for uh, new kits and stuff we've seen on the streets. We'll we'll get we'll uh, keep searching the interwebs, and if we hear anything, we'll pass it. We'll pass it your way. Hey modelers, have you ever struggled with how to display a contest winning model or a project you completed after many years of work? How about protecting a model you built for a veteran or a family member? 
Well, Basis by Bill has a solution. Their museum quality display cases are the perfect way to protect and enhance that special model. Built by modelers for modelers, Basis by Bill display cases are available for any type of model and for any size. Check out their website at basisbybill.com to see their new range of Astro cases, available in 18 different sizes, or to get your own custom-built display case quote. Use the code GEEKS at checkout to apply a 10% listener discount to your order. That code again is GEEKS for 10% off. Bases by Bill, for all your display model case needs. All right, moving on for uh, shows and contests. I'm just going to give a quick update here. So uh, for our region, really the next show is in... uh, on September 16th, that's old good old PenCon in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. And uh, obviously always a great show, great group of people. So we'll look forward to, to attending that one. That should be a lot of fun. And um, also to just check out the uh, IPMS website. They've got a great list of all the upcoming shows. Um, you can just Google the calendar at IPMS USA um for all the events that they have um and again just check out their website um and they'll give you not just you know any region but everything for for the u.s so uh but that's all i got for shows and contests uh you know kind of quiet here we hit all of our big shows um uh, for our region um earlier in the year and uh which is kind of just typically how it works the early early part of the year we have a, a ton of ton of shows and uh, but of course, uh, Tim hit the big one with PaxCon coming up uh, later this year, which is going to be a great time. We have and a then, ton of good shows. We do have a ton of good shows. That's correct. And uh, nationals, of course, San Marcos, the second through the fifth of August. Uh, we're all going to be there except for Whitey, unfortunately. So we'll miss you, Whitey. But <laughs> I know, I know, it's a bummer. Uh, but uh, you know, we'll. Uh, Send us your list, man. Least we can do is send us your list, you know. So yeah, we we can always shop for you. We can we, always shop. That for doesn't you. mean we'll buy, but we'll shop. But if there's if there's a couple of things you're like, man, I'm really looking for this or that, then of course, you know, we'll uh just shoot it our way and we'll uh um, yeah, yeah. We'll sure hook you thing. Up. We'll okay. hook you up. Okay. You hey man, I took... I, you can't ship me back hanging out with the guys drinking beers and having fun. <laughs> I know. But if I can find you another hard to find kitty hawk whatever just let me know and we'll Amen. pick you up one so and we'll post Amen. on facebook and you can yeah. yeah you can always join us there and maybe we'll set up some sort of uh, uh virtual some sort of virtual yeah, environment i mean you know we facebook we have some live knowledge on how to do that yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then and we can like toast and um uh, maybe go to the yeah. dojo or something and yeah we'll drink have uh, yeah, i'll even have one in your honor man and then i'll be out for the rest of the night <laughs> to go to go to sleep. <laughs> uh, anyway, cool. All right. Well, that's a uh, show update for you. All right. All right. Moving on to uh, just a couple quick hobby shop shout outs. Of course, I always want to hit up uh, Frontline Model Kips. Kips? Kips? <laughs> Frontline Model <laughs> Kits and Hobbies in Stanton, Virginia. Again, you want to talk about an old timey, good smelling hobby shop. That's Frontline right there. Of course, uh, Rudy and Danielle with Lionheart um, Hobbies in, in Kyle, Texas. I, uh, of course, can't say enough good stuff about them. And then one of our good close buddies, uh, Brent Leidig, he told, uh, he sent us a hobby shop shout out. Uh, it's called um, Wing Wheels, and it's in Sanford, North Carolina. He says it's just a, a true old school type of hobby shop. So again, it's called Wing Wheels in Sanford, North Carolina. So give give them a shout if you're in the Sanford. Uh, North Carolina area, but uh, that's all I got for um, for hobby shop uh, shout outs. And uh, a quick, uh, we'll move on real quick for a, a tool and a tip. Um, this will kind of play into a little bit of our uh, discussion that we're going to have when we do our, our main topic. But you know, especially with me, just l- kind of having my compressor go on the fritz. Um, you know, I thought about possibly doing the CO two uh, tank. Uh, but you know, I just was like, ah, I, I just, I, I went and ended up in buying the compressor. So, and, and I think that the, the tool and the tip is obviously if you don't have, if you're wanting to spray with the airbrush, you've really got to get a compressor and not just compressed air in a can, um, like the old, 
you know, um, propellant cans that we used to use, you know, that's, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a CO2 tank where you have constant dehumidify. That's what's great about the CO2 tank is it's, it's constant pressure and it's, it's clean air. So it's not, there's just not a ton of moisture in it or having a compressor. And the compressor that I ended up buying was a, a spar max and it's, a compressor that feeds into a tank, which then feeds into the airbrush. And it's got a regulator and it's got two outputs so I can have two different hoses and be going back and forth with both the airbrushes. And and again, a shout out to to Tim for hooking me up with, with this particular. I got it from Spray Gunner and uh, I'll give you guys an update on how things go. But again, the the tool is get yourself a compressor and a tip. Make sure it's got a water trap or a moisture trap and I can't say enough about the QD fitting. So the quick disconnect fitting. So that is when I'm going back and forth between airbrushes and paint schemes and all this stuff, being able to just quickly pop on and off another airbrush is worth it. I had no idea how huge that was. And I think most everybody here on the podcast, all the model geeks, you guys all have QDs for your airbrushes, don't you? Absolutely. You know, yeah. I can remember yeah. seeing guys with, um, like these uh, huge, like multiple manifolds and things like that on their yeah. uh, setup. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, um, <laughs> it, you know, and that just means multiple hoses, more expense is what it comes yep. down to. Right. You know, so have, yep, when right. those QDs came along, it was like, oh man, that's, that, that's the way to go. Genius. Genius. Yeah. Where, where yep. have they been all my life? I, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. I, it was a game changer for me when I yep. switched. Yeah. They're fantastic. Yeah. I, I I really like them. I, I, I mean, you could you can get on like Amazon and just Google or you know put it in the search bar. Um, you know, yeah, quick you disconnect like for airbrush. For like yeah, ten bucks or yeah, something. they're they're super cheap and man, they work. <laughs> they're awesome. Yeah. Hobby Lobby has them too. If you got a Hobby Lobby by you, they oh have sweet, the, the uh, Iwata ones. Sweet, wow. there yeah. you go. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, one thing to add on your uh, tool tip with the uh, yeah. compressor is make sure it's got a tank. If you're if you're not going to get yeah. a CO two cart or tank then uh, make sure you get a tank on your compressor. That way you've got stable air as opposed to the pulsing, yep. um, which can really irk you if you, yep. if you don't. Yeah. Or there's nothing like you're busy airbrushing all day and you're not paying attention to how much moisture you have in your moisture trap and you keep spraying. Guess what? Eventually, spraying water. it's going to spray all over your model and you're just going <gasps> to... And that happened to me. Um, oh God, when was it? I think it was with the SU twenty seven that happened. I just wasn't paying attention, and it just spit everywhere. And you just have to like allow your, pardon me, my balls to come out of my throat because I was like, <gasps> I mean, yeah, I was like, oh, all that work, all that effort, and I'm like, oh, just just calm down, put it down, just walk away. I let the the water just. Luckily, it didn't do any damage. I mean, it did a little bit, but um, you know, just just again, I tried. I tried to be patient, but yeah, those moisture traps and getting a, a compressor to fill a tank or having a CO two tank that's really that's the way to go, for sure, for sure. All right, cool. Moving on. All right, um, let's head into everybody's favorite topic just real quick. Um, mail call. All right. The first one comes from, uh, Brian and I apologize, Brian, if I butcher your last name, um, Hatak or Hatak. Um, so apologies if I'm screwing that up. Uh, just had a question about MRP and I know whitey has been hooking you up going back with some MRP numbers for some FS numbers. And you got a copy of the TPS, uh, paint gouge. So again, thanks for writing in. And of course, thanks to whitey for hooking him up. Um, and uh, for getting a copy. And if you've got any other questions about whether it's MRP, you know, paint numbers or it's FS numbers or whatever you need for painting U.S. Navy TPS schemes, you know, or any kind of scheme whatsoever, just shoot us an email and we're happy to happy to help you out. Uh, of course, uh, we've got uh, uh, another gentleman. His name's Peter. And again, Peter, if I mispronounce your last name, I apologize. Erhart. Um, and he was commenting on one of our uh, last podcasts we're talking about inspirations to build and that, you know, there's several different inspirations that he's had just like us, whether, you know, it's artwork or other people's models or going to a show. So again, he just kind of was, you know, super 
um, into all the different inspirations and they're everywhere, you know, whether it's again, magazine books, you know, in person or whatever. And, and uh, a big thing was just other people, you know, just seeing other people's uh, builds were a huge inspiration. He also mentioned, uh, you know, Rudy from Lionheart, his other business is called Caltex. Caltex is just kind of Rudy's separate. Um, he has Lionheart and he's got Caltex and Caltex He's able, you can order this stuff online. So if you have, if you've got uh, any questions about um, Lionheart and Rudy's uh, products, uh, just, just give him a call or shoot him up on his, uh, on his email that you can get from the Lionheart website. And uh, again, Caltex, that's kind of his, his spinoff of company that he's uh, producing or has some really good products uh, for purchase online. And again, Peter, thanks for the, for, thanks for the email. Um, Scott Eli gave us another good email. Um, again, loves the show. And um, he said he was a first time air, airbrush user. And uh, he was asking about, in particular, ventilation. So, again, I know for me, I, that's why I spray Gunsy Aqueous. Uh, and I open up a window and I spray with a respirator on. So, I spray indoors. All I do is open up the window, turn my fan on, and uh, put my respirator on, and I spray all day. Um, I don't have a paint booth, but he was asking about paint booths. I know Frill, you use a paint booth, so maybe you can just what kind of what size is your paint booth, and can maybe if you could just kind of talk about your paint booth just a little bit for uh, for Scott. Yeah, man, it's um, it's one of those aluminum ones. I think uh, who makes the sucker? I, I I got it from um, Carlos Danger in the club. He was moving up north, and he was like, "Hey, anybody want this paint booth?" And I was like, "Yeah, man, I'll take it." And, uh, you gotta love Carlos, man. Yeah. Well, you, hey, oh, you yeah, want man. this five thousand dollar whatever? Did, sure. Did it come with a set and, of Uggs? Asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, with all the filters and everything, and you just take a. So I have that sitting down here, and then for the longest time, I was too afraid to cut the hole in the outside of the house because where I where I'm at in the basement, right above me is well the outside of the house, so. I was always afraid because I have siding and I want to mess up my siding. Then I got to deal with messed up siding and I'll never hear the end of it. So I had a buddy of mine who does HVAC stuff and he was like, oh yeah, man, I do that stuff. So he came out one day and, uh, where do you want it? So I told him where I wanted it and you go to you cut the hole, you go to Lowe's and they have a dryer kit, dryer vent kit. And you just slide it in the hole and hook your dryer hose to it. And I went and put RTV around the outside so it would seal up. No water or snow would get in. And, uh, yeah, when I start spraying, I just flip the switch on and it draws. Flip got, the switch! I got a uh, air conditioning filter, a 16 by 20 by 1 air conditioning filter will fit there you go. in the back of it. So cool. that's how big it's. Yeah, so 16 by 20 wide. And it's about 24 maybe 36 inches high and christ three three feet wide maybe so i can get a good huge, you know, i can get man. a 30 yeah when i was doing that 24 scale p47 i was able to get it in there no problem wow and uh and yeah i like it and i have a uh and carlos he had a uh led light taped to the outside of it so i cool i engineered well, that's that a steel to then <laughs> oh yeah man I literally for all the time that's mm-hmm. like almost free oh wait it was free it was yep. free. <laughs> That's the best. Sure cool. was. Yeah. I think, I mean, if, if I had the room and the space, I think I'd, I wouldn't mind a, a paint booth. I don't know how I'd be able to spray in it, though, you know, and the, use my well, my magnifier really and all that stuff. I well, I really know. don't spray in it, in it. I just, you know, in, in front of it. And when that turn it on, when the fan's it. on, it, it sucks, it sucks pulls it the air in. in. So you cool. can see like your overspray going right to the filter. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And then the fumes go out. Deal, I'll man. hear it. My wife will be like, are you painting down there again if I don't have it on? Yeah. And like you, I use Gunsy. So yeah, and it just blows it out. I have, yeah. And I have no problem. Yeah. Good deal. That's smart. That's smart. Yeah. I think it would be smart. I, I mean, I, I wish I had. I, a, that's why I wear the respirator. So I don't have to worry about And I still wear a respirator too. Wow. Yeah. Look at you. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. yeah cool. I've got a, in my paint booth, I, I, I used a, uh, a do it yourself, uh, uh, kit, if you will. Yeah. That I bought from Ventworks, um, Ventworks.com, yep. and uh, it, it's uh, it uses a, a twelve by twenty four um, uh, AC fa- um, filter, and it has uh, dryer vents and all that kind of stuff. And I I built it and I run the 
uh, I've got the paint booth in my basement, so I run it up into the overhead and then it goes outside. Uh, but I still wear a respirator. Um, I, I shoot uh, Tamiya, but I also shoot the occasional lacquer. Yeah. And so it's I, I wear the respirator to protect my lungs. Um, yep. God knows I need Smart. to since I've got asthma. But uh, um, I, I think it works great. Uh, it was the probably the best add-on that I ever had to my modeling because I can do it right here in my uh, um, in my uh, basement. basement. Cool. Good deal. Yep. Well, there you go, Scott. Um, you got more questions about ventilation, spray booths, first time airbrush user. You know, I'm just going to, you didn't, I don't think you asked. I can't remember. Maybe you did, but go get yourself a Mr. Hobby PS 771 uh, airbrush, even though you're a first time user. It's awesome. I promise you'd love it. Um, all right. Last one, Don Gilman. Just wanted to give a shout out to El Presidente himself and looks forward to seeing us at Nats. He loves fire bombers. So again, thanks Don for writing in and giving a shout out to, uh, to Tim. Hey, thanks a lot. Got it. Man, El Presidente getting get, shout out email. Getting shout outs. I never even I've never even got a shout out. Shout out. Yeah, you know? All right. I, I, like, I need to get a t shirt that says El Presidente. As, you do. You do need just to get, get one. like <laughs> nitpicker. <laughs> get your like suit coat with your your shoulder boards, you yeah. know, and no, uh, I'm some, not gonna do the shoulder sash boards. Sash across. <laughs> now that now, my wife did she did suggest the sash. <laughs> what a lick can i get your autographs and no, i'm just kidding cool. walking around playing hail to the chief hail to the chief you sure you sure that you want to do something like that at nats uh this this time around there something with president maybe not shirt, this or? year maybe, maybe not this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah not this year <laughs> not this year i mean yeah. all right well, cool. Well, I, hey, thanks I don't everybody. look like Dave, so I, you know if anybody <laughs> yeah. knows sees his picture in, uh, yeah. you in, do not look like him journal, at all. Yeah, then um, that's not be you. easy to know that. Okay, it's a different El Presidente. <laughs> yes, it's not you. <laughs> all right. Well, again, thanks everybody for writing in. Appreciate um, all the email. Um, of course, always welcome, uh, folks. Either whether you want to email us or drop us a line on the Facebook page. I mean, if you ever have any question you know, about a technique or topic or anything, or if you've got sh uh, show suggestions or hobby shop shout outs, whatever, you know, or just want to say, Hey, what's up guys. Uh, always feel free to toss us a message. Um, you can always reach us at contact at model .com, Or again, like I said, just post it up on our Facebook page. But again, thanks to everybody. Appreciate all the listeners and everybody writing in. Cool. Hey modelers, Furball Jeff here. Are you tired of boring, underperforming, or inaccurate decals that just plain suck? Not to worry, Furball Aero Design has you covered. We have an extensive lineup of ultra high quality aircraft decals covering U.S. military aircraft subjects from World War II to the present day. Our extensively researched decal sets are printed to the hobby industry's highest quality standard by Cartograph of Italy. Only Cartograph can capture minute details with stunning fidelity. The colors on our sets are printed to match U.S. federal standard colors for maximum accuracy. Every furball set has numerous options and include lavishly illustrated detailed placement guides. Our decals have minimal carrier film and will give the markings on your model that painted on look. So if you're ready to take your build to the next level, check out our website at furballarrow-design.com. That's furballarrow-design.com. And now, back to the geeks. All right. Let's, uh, let's dive into our main topic um, tonight. We have uh, painting uh, natural metal finishes. I've, I've recently, I've, I've done quite a few actually nat natural metal finishes, and I was scared to death of, of doing them. And... Um, took a long Join time yeah took a long time for me to finally get up the the cajones to to actually put paint on plastic and i did a lot of research before i started pulling the trigger and putting spraying the paint and uh i've kind of found what works for me and we're going to talk about what works for the guys here in the podcast what experiences they've had but i get that it's a very it's intimidating to spray natural metal finish because your your room for air and your margin of error is very small it's very small and any little bitty 
flaw that you have in the surface is just going to be magnified by the by the paint, especially when you use good paint. Now, of course, you could load it on there with a the rattle can, some Krylon, and you're probably not going to see the some of the the the, the blemishes. You might but, not see the airplane, but either, you might but, not yeah. see the airplane either. <laughs> yeah, molting ball. Oh my of goodness, <laughs> Darren with his Krylon chrome whatever anyway i keep it on my desk to remind me of what not to do what not to use <laughs> excellent yep. excellent all right so there, there'll be a flow here we're basically gonna we'll start off kind of talking about um like when you're when you when when i'm building a, a model typically i've chosen one like for example if i'm going to do a natural metal finish i've chosen that particular model and i'm like yep i'm gonna i want to do that model because i want to do natural metal finish like when I chose the KI-84, the Arma Hobby, I knew that I wanted to do a natural metal finish and then go back and put green squiggles all over it and mess it up because I thought that that would be cool. Were when you I built, drinking at the time? I was not. I was Are forced, you sure? I was forced to build a 70-second scale <laughs> kit because Tim was going to beat me I up. I went over to Scott's place at least weekly and did. jacked his arm yep. up and said, <laughs> yeah. you are making progress. Tell me you are. And I had Guido like, come over at least once. And I would get, <laughs> you guys have heard this, the work is not progressing. And I'm just like, <laughs> yes, it is progressing. I'm trying my best to get it done, but I'm scared because I don't. Anyway, but it's always that fear of screwing it up. And with natural metal finish, it's just so easy to do. So I get it. But Sometimes you just got to whip out the old mule and paint it and mess it up and be like, oh, okay, I learned. I'm not going to do that when I hope it don't I, kick you. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like Frodo says, you got to sack up. Yes. <laughs> sack and up. just do it. Just try it. Try sack it. Get the mule out. Balls of steel. See what I did? Balls there. of steel. Paint them like balls <laughs> of steel. Anyway. All right. So, all right. I'm going to try to keep us focused here because we could get, we could, we could go down rabbit holes real fast. All right. Okay. So when I'm talking about what type of natural metal finish, when you're thinking about when you're going to start to build the model, I'm like, does it need to be smooth and glossy? Do you want it semi-gloss or do you want it more of like a kind of a beat up P51, P47, been in the European theater for a while type of almost like a matte kind of not very much of a sheen. Like what you're thinking about? It it does. It depends on the, do you, are you, do you want to weather it? Do you want it? to be pristine do you want it to look like it just rolled off the factory floor do you want it to look like a die cast model some people do, you want do. A warbird do you want a warbird what you want so what when you guys are thinking about if you just think about what's your preferred um sort of natural metal look in a model when it comes to your head what's your what do you guys think about i'm just going to throw it out there to the group and you can just you know just Tell me what you think. What do you what do you think about when you're thinking about natural metal finish? What are you thinking about? Go. Anybody. All right. For me, it's going to be um, it's going to start with, with the subject I'm building and and the reference photos yep. I'm looking at. That's going to determine the finish yes. I put on it. Um, you know, if I'm going to do a uh, Korean War era F-86. I'm probably not going to have a bright, shiny, yeah. mirror-finished <laughs> looking natural metal airplane, uh, you, you know, displayed. Um, but but for me, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with with a reference photo that I look at first, um, and, and that that's gonna guide me down the down the path. Um, as far as what I use, I'm like I'm like most models, I. I don't look forward to doing natural metal. There's tons of subjects out there I want to do in natural metal, but yeah, you know, I can remember when <clears throat> when Model Master come out with the uh, metalizer metal. line. I, yeah, I was like yeah. super psyched. I, I remember that you know late '80s, early '90s, and then you, you know, so I did a, a few models using that stuff. It was great stuff through the years. It didn't mask well, however, right? Uh, then Alclad came along, and that was like the game shizzle. changer. Yeah, yeah, and and that's pretty much what I've used for you know when I look out on my shelves and I see what I have uh, for for natural metal finished air m- you know models. I, I don't have a lot. I have you know my current count is just four models out of my collection out here is uh, in natural metal, and 
uh, they're all Al clad. I haven't tried any yeah. of these newer ones. I know you, I think you guys have messed around with some, so I'll let you guys speak. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. haven't gone into them. Now, one of my, uh, projects that I want to do, uh, you know, when I was sitting and talking with the, uh, triple P guys a while back, you know, they always ask, uh, what's your magnum opus, uh, subject. And for me, I, I, you know, World War II history guy, man. I I, I want to do Enola Gay, and I want to do it uh, as as she was, you know, post mission. Uh, how those things looked out there at, at Tinian, and um, and how that you know they weren't old airplanes; they were practically brand new by the time they got to Tinian and did <clears> the <throat> missions. You know, so you look at photos of those guys; they are bright and shiny. And I, you know, so I, I want to do the monograms forty eight. B-29 as an Ola Gay. And I'm leaning toward trying the, you know, here's how much of a pain in the ass natural metal finishes are. But people will go to the to to the effort of using aluminum foil to put them put put on plastic. <laughs> I know, know, man. I mean, you know, and so that, you know, in Genesis, uh, what's her name over there in the UK? you're looking at her site genesis you know she's done a couple of natural metal finish models using the aluminum uh foil and adhesive you know and, and when i say aluminum foil i'm not talking bare metal foil that you can peel off i'm talking like store bought aluminum Reynolds foil wrapped. Reynolds yeah, Reynolds wrap and, and putting it on the model and, and using um you know various adhesives to keep it there um and that's an undertaking uh you know that that's some effort that uh, I, I'm not sure if I do, if I, I have to try that on a couple of small projects first before I go down that road of doing a, yeah, man. a 48 B 29 for certain. You yeah. Know? If you're going to foil it, it, it works better on a larger, a larger scale. Definitely does. That's because yeah. I, I tried it um, idiotically on a, uh, <laughs> uh, on a 72nd scale P 36, the old uh, monogram kit. Mm-hmm. And, and it went down just fine. But the kit didn't look scale at anymore. Well, it, it looked like a toy. It's kind of had that grain in it, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, i i did all the I did all the techniques that it required. But I used. Uh, it, but at the end of the day, and I did the. I mean, it was a dead smooth airplane. But um, it, it just the thickness of the aluminum foil. It just didn't look right to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. It didn't I, look realistic. So. It, but I, my takeaway was, if I had done this on a 30-second scale kit, it probably would have looked good, yep. but not on a 70-second scale kit. Well, too, I like the way the aluminum foil looks, though, and people can really pull it off because you get the grains. Like, the, you'll get the granular. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, you, you and then can, they'll sit there and they'll yeah. turn it, you know, and they'll lay it different directions on the model. So when the light catches it, it's, like, different. Yeah, yeah that's, that looks pretty sharp. that's a trick. I've, I've seen it done well. Never. <laughs> you know what i mean i, yeah, I i've it's, seen it's people tough, do man. it and they just so i'm like nope i'm i'm painting i'm painting and i think again it goes back to what's what subject like like you said whitey it's it's get a good picture where you're like that's that's what i want to do and so and do your homework do your research on on that picture and and learn about you know how how like when i did my as one of the reasons i took so long to do that su27 is i had in my head how i wanted to do what i wanted the engines to look like and i had a picture from an old verlinden lock on book and that's what i used as my guide and i'm like i practiced on my mule before i learned how to make it look like the picture it wasn't like the first time i painted it and i'm like oh that's exactly how i wanted it to look and eh, wrong I did yeah. several iterations on my mule to figure out the right sequence and when am I polishing and what paints am I using and how, what wash am I using and what kind of paint am I using in order to make it look like the picture. So I, I agree. And it, it took a long time. It This wasn't, that's the thing with natural metal finishes is folks just, just buckle up and uh, get in for the ride because it's going to be a while. You know, if you want a quick natural metal finish with your Krylon spray can, I'm kidding. But, but if you want a quick and you want to use a, a spray can, you can do that. It's just not going to have that scale. I think the scale effect, which we can scale all debate effect. that. I hate that. Yeah. You yeah. Know, but. but, but I get it. It's kind of like 
sometimes the spray cans they ha- they're a little speckly and and the silver looks a little it just it just looks yeah, I'm not, not going to mess odd. with a spray can when it comes yeah. to that and, and no. you know you say a speckly too any of the uh acrylic yeah. metals that I've tried to use too are yeah. way too speckly yeah they're just speckly um, yeah probably like the coolest natural metal finishes that the, the ones I like are the weathered ones yeah and you, like at the most recent uh, Fairfax show there was a trumpeter Sukhoi 9 Sitting yeah. out there, forty-eight scale. Then it was done up um, in natural metal finish, you know, uh, as the Soviets did, and it's and it's and it's weathered. There's nothing shiny about it whatsoever, but it looks friggin' fantastic. He and used he he spray painted it. I think do you he know used, who did it. I, I do. I, I, I talk because I, I talked to him. You know, you don't know he, the guy's name though. No, nah, but he's from no, he's from yeah. PA. He's from, okay. from the PA One of those show. Guys? I can't, okay. Yeah. Really nice guy. And I said, how did you make it look like that? Because I agree. I It was, excuse me, one of the most impressive weathered metal finishes, yeah. realistic weathered metal finishes that I've ever seen. And he used graphite powder from a pencil. Right. Okay. Now that's I what he used. About yeah, yeah. 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 And I, I was like, holy goodness, that you excellent. He pulled it off. Most of the time yeah. they don't pull it off. It looks pretty. He said he used just a stubby brush and just slowly worked it into the finish and yeah. uh it said so you, you he said it do that a long time a, you know a korean war f86 to a degree yep. um a, a b24 sitting in your oh, yeah. most you of know. the p51s from yeah. P51s, late, late yeah. world right, war ii you know? yep. right other than the brand new ones that showed up just yeah. at the end of the war yeah I mean, they were showing up daily yeah yeah but I, again it's it's a figure out what you want and then it's time to move on to the next step, which is how do you prep the surface? So I like to prep the surface by just making sure that I'm spraying on bare plastic. So when I'm spraying my metal, this is just my personal preference. This is what works for me, but I'm using, you know, the paint, my paint of choice is either MRP metallic paints, Gunsy super metallics, um, or uh, the to me a new LP line of paints, the metallic paints that they're like LP eleven, because that stuff just sprays like butter. It's just it's you know especially with MRP and Gunsy Super Metallics, they're pre thinned, so you can just it's just uh, it's just easy day. You can and you used to have to decant the to me a AS twelve. You know, it's decant that stuff, put it into a jar, let it you know it off gas, and then you can spray it and spray like butter. But the new LP stuff, MRP and Gunsy, um, uh, Mr. Metallics, those are just awesome paints. And I, I prefer to spray them right on the plastic. Um, I don't put a primer down. I don't put like uh, any of these gloss coats down. Again, I'm putting it right on the plastic. Um, you know, um, it works well. Real quick, I want to interject here. Um, I normally would too. But when I did my Tamiya P38J... When I put that LP11 down over the bare plastic, you the pore lines from where the plastic filled the mold. You know how you look at a plastic kit, you can kind of see the swirl marks where the plastic flowed. Oh yeah, those, those stood out. Yeah, I mean, so. it's. I think it's. It, it goes without saying, or maybe it doesn't. Um, make sure and check the surface if you see swirl marks. Then, because, you know, like when I did the engines on the SU-27, the plastic, I mean, I didn't have anything that looked like that. Or even on the the P-51 that I built, the Tamiya P-51, the plastic was perfect. Um, Or even this little KI-84. Again, I didn't have swirl marks, but you're right, Frill. I think that's just like, be smart about it. Don't just assume, oh, I don't ever need a primer. You needed a primer in that area, you know, because you you had problems with it. So. You know, this isn't and, always the definitive, you know, this is how you do it every single time. You know, you got to be smart about this stuff. So anyway, I'm sorry, and, you're trying to say something. Well, I'm going to say and what I used for it was Uber Thin Down um, Gun Z 1500 Mr. Finisher. Not Surfacer, but their finisher brand. I think the pigments are finer and it lays down yep. silky smooth and you get a nice semi-matte kind of finish where you can still get some of that reflectivity back. And you can like still was, polish it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's why so I did a real light coat of that over it just to kind of cover it up. And that seemed cool. to be the trick. 
Yeah, I mean, because you had you had great results with your P thirty eight, and did when what kind of paint did you use again to to paint it? Um, that started out with that base um primer finisher down, and then I used um the base was LP eleven. Cool. Yeah. And then I went through and you got to be careful with alclads because I know for a while there, there was a problem with a bad batch of alclad. I, I experienced it. It was yeah, well, horrible. Yeah. I've got like, I've got like 14 bottles of alclad <laughs> up there and all of them, but like one are bad. Yeah. I mean, they're that old. So shelf yeah. life on that stuff isn't the greatest. Yeah. I, I but, threw uh, all my alclad away. So. And another metal paint I like is Model Master Metalizer, the buffing ones. Because I would mask off a panel and I would hit it with that. And then I just take my super soft t-shirt and you just sit there and you can just, you like grind the pig. You know, that's kind of rough. You know, yeah. it's like the, and you just grind that pigment into the surface and it shines it up and it makes it look really good. Yep. And I use, I use that. I used um, MRP, um, silver, titanium, and just some different various met, metal shades and picked out different panels. Yeah, I, I, I try to be like some of the older, like, uh, model master enamel because enamel's just i mean it, it is it is good paint it sprays beautifully um i did the, I, I just i will always worry about interacting like acrylics enamels and uh, lacquers kind of mixing them all together not mixing them in the bottle but just mixing different paints on you know you just have to sometimes the chemistries will will, well, will act up a little bit so yeah and that's why i went down with the base my base was lp11 it was a lacquer yeah that's just that solid way i had a hard lacquer down that dried within yep. like a half hour yeah you could put an acrylic over it you didn't have to worry about cracking nope. or anything later nope. on nope and so that would that was why i did that and so for your base coat me personally i like a lacquer for the the base yep i agree man all good cool yeah i, I know the long, a long time ago when I built, and some guys do, they'll use like an enamel. Um, I think I used, God, what was it? Extra color, enamel, um, gloss yeah. gray. This was years ago uh, before I used to just go straight on. And it, it that actually worked really well. I personally don't like when they put a gloss black down and then spray the metal color over the black. It looks, it looks odd well, to me. And you only need that for it. like, if you're going to put down like a super polished chrome finish, which I never do because yeah. I do Warbirds. Yeah. And it just looks odd. Yeah. Two months in theater, they're all worn down anyway. And they're, you know, they're not as, their yeah. luster isn't as bright as they were, you know, when they're all chromed out. Not like the Reno Air Racer, we're old boys yeah. out there with the, <laughs> with, yeah. with the silver polish and the buffer. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's, but yeah, can, I think. Can I ask a uh, question? Sure. About yeah. Your, uh, yeah. So, so model choice. When you, when you choose a subject, do you then get a model that, um, you know, you've decided I want to do a natural metal finish. Do you choose a model that, um, I hate to say minimizes or requires no filler because filler is to me is always, uh, um, I, I, I rarely get a kit as nice as say the, the fine molds kit, but, um, where I don't need filler. And so I end up, um, needing to to put um either you know some sort of uh primer down to cover it up and even out the finish sure or not the finish but the color so i've got a good base color to put the metal uh the metalizer on or whatever the metal the metallic color is i mean do you guys choose models that um don't require that and and avoid a model that would necessarily you know it's the only one out there um kind of not- kind of thing not necessarily because it comes down to surface prep, right? And you are kind of alluding to it. Like if you've got to use filler, which if I'm doing natural metal, I will try like hell not to use putty because putty is just, you can always tell where you use putty to fill something when you put a natural metal finish over it because it like absorbs the, 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 yeah. the paint different than the plastic does. So right. on kits where I have done that, what I have done is I have gone and put over a tester's lacquer dull coat right over top of it to seal everything in so i have the same surface because the key with natural metal finishes is you got to have the the medium all has to be the same whether if, like scott likes the the hard plastic right so he'll take the time to get his seams make sure that there's you know they're as hard as the uh 
the plastic or the reflectivity or this is shiny as the plastic. And that was what I was getting when I was spraying um, Tester's Dull Coat because I can never get that crap to go down perfectly flat for whatever reason. I don't know. And so it kind of <laughs> went down like a semi mat. So it had a little right. bit of shine gotcha. to it, just like plastic does. And then, you know, I check and I hold it to the light. And as long as I know that that, you know, that lacquer has sealed that surface in, you're, you're good to go. Yeah. I, I, and that's I, why they say, <clears throat> you know, excuse me, surface prep is key when doing that. It, it really is. And, and But Tim, I, I, I'm with you. So when I'm, there are, I'll just say this, there are certain kits or certain aircraft that I really want to build, but there's not, but to me or Hasegawa or some of the other quality kit companies maybe haven't produced it. It's with some of the right. other stuff that you're like, well, it's going to have, I, I got 20 different parts and pieces for a fuselage. Yeah. I'm not, I'm, I'm probably staying away from it because I, right. I know that that, that metal, the, the metallic colors are going to just, I can't get that seam. Like if I had to paint my SU 27 from Kitty Hawk, let's say that that was a natural metal finish. I, I, I would have never finished. I would, I wouldn't have built it because, right. because of all of the seams and, and the work that I had to do to get that thing ready to accept paint. I just, I, I think the natural metal finish, it, 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 there's, it would have, no, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have built it. So yeah, I yeah. think there, it does influence me. Right. It, Cause it, to be fair, that has influenced me staying away yeah. from a number of subjects. Yeah. Although I, I'm guilty of saying, uh, for lack of a better phrase, F it. I'm uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna build the kit anyway because yeah. it's the best kit there is. Sure. And I'm and I'm not gonna wait until I'm you know in my 90s or worse to to get the Tamiya kit because they yeah. may never release it. And um and I still want that on my on my shelf. So I'm yeah. So I'm starting to I'm starting to acquire the models that are um. Yeah, they're not going to be great. Uh, they're going to be a challenge. Yeah, uh, just like yeah. building a sword uh, F3D. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, and the the ghost seams with that, it's going to be a challenge uh, because some of these kits are sword kits, and you know, nothing against sword because at least they're making them. Yeah. Um, and but it means that I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna have to spend more time figuring out how to fix that seam. Yeah. So that it doesn't stand, because uh, I know it's going to stand out under a natural metal finish, yep. and that's my challenge. Now, is there a pref- like for me? I mean, I like I'm, when I'm spraying natural metal stuff. Uh, I, I like lacquer, so I don't care for enamel. I don't care for definitely don't care for acrylic. So for me, my my paint of choice is either like I said to me at LP11, um, MRP. Or some of the Gunsy Super Metallics. That so it's lacquer based paint is what I'm spraying because I can use um, a good wash on it, get a nice even coat. So I don't like I don't like a lot of people like using enamel. Um, it it is going to spray beautifully, like the extreme, you know, metal colors. Those are all enamel. Uh, but I I just don't like how they react with the washes. So um, what about you guys? What do you prefer? Uh, paint wise if we we were gonna somebody was asking us hey what do you recommend i'm gonna paint my first natural metal aircraft what kind of paint do you recommend that i get the go the best success i've had is um lp11 uh and i i um yeah lp11 is a base coat and before that as12 out of a rattle can as my base coat so a nice lacquer base to the model and then, um, uh, frankly, I would wait 24 hours and then put and then mask off the panels that I wanted to mask off uh, and shoot them. Uh, um, the last thing, time I used it, it was or did it was with a uh, an acrylic because that's all I had. Um, but I need to get the the either MRP or SMS uh, one of the lacquer metallics uh, because I think that's the way I'm going to be able to get the. Uh, go to the next level and actually start yeah. achieving some of the natural metal finishes that I want to achieve. Cool. Well, um, I think it goes without saying definitely for air sources, you know, you, you got to have something that's, that's a solid air source, whether it's CO2 or compressed air. Um, that's something that we, that we have, you have to do. Um, it's just, you know, you got to have a, a, a consistent 
spraying source that'll give you the the smoothest airflow. Um, and I think, you know, once I know once I get, once I decide to go ahead and, and spray, I'm spraying probably about, I don't know, I think I'm probably spraying a little bit higher on the PSI, like 20, 25, something like that. Maybe even a little bit higher. Just you have to be careful. You don't want to get, just, just keep a nice flow going, open up the nozzle, um, to allow you to, to put that, to allow you to put that paint down. Um, you know, and then, you know, I think that, you know, again, prepping the surface, um, just before I spray, I'm, I'm, I'm giving it another good polish, whether I'm using a soft t-shirt or some of the, you know, I think Mr. Hobby and Tamiya have some of those polishing compounds that you can use, um, to, to polish the plastic. Or if you've used like, um, the, um, Gunsy, the, the Mr. Hobby, uh, 1500, uh, finisher, um, you can let that, you can buff that. Um, or, you know, but again, there's just nothing like a, an old soft t-shirt. It just takes some time, you know, to polish that stuff out. Shit. I even used, I even have some like 3M car polish that I use that works really well. Um, is there anything in particular you guys like to use, um, uh, for polishing, whether it's before or after or whatever, is there anything you guys have in particular different than what I've chatted about or what you like? Oh, the Novus. The Novus. I use the Novus three-part system. Old underwear. Not two part, three part. <laughs> hey, what's wrong with old underwear? Correct. Not the two part. And then I follow up with uh, standard spittle and yes. um, an old t shirt, which I have right here. Not underwear, though, right? <coughs> I do not oh. use underwear. Old underwear. There's nothing wrong with old underwear as long as it's not dirty. You don't want old deer tay undies, but, you know, undies that are like 30 years old, that's pretty good stuff, man. It's nice and this polish rules and I, you know what also I use, you know, when you go get your glasses, cause we all are getting a little older. So we all got glasses and they come with those polishing cloths. Oh man, those are, oh, perfect. those are awesome. Those are perfect for polishing models, people. So go get your glasses. When you get your new glasses, go snag the, the polishing cloth. <laughs> that works perfect for, uh, for a polishing, um, like type of uh, material to be able to polish paint. Um, Right there. Okay, so you're just yeah. There you go, for real. For I'm telling you, it's just it, we all got them, especially us old dudes with our with our spectacles. Um, but uh, you know, and, and for me, once when well, you know, I I just I like to wait. I I am not a spray it and then start masking right away kind of guy. Guys that have had problems spray their natural metal and they send you a picture and they're like, look at how awesome it looks, and then two minutes later they're masking it and i'm like yeah, and then they're sending you a picture what did i do wrong yep you mask too soon yeah that's the yeah. big that's the big kicker is that you you gotta wait folks it's it, this isn't an over this isn't a two-minute process unfortunately this is it takes a little bit longer but i promise you just just again strap in with the seat belt get along for the ride and uh and just go nice and slow uh, but i like I like to wait a couple of hours at minimum. I wait a couple of hours before I'll even try to touch it. But, and usually I, I have it set up. So after I put the base coat on that, I can set it aside. I'll work on fiddly bits or whatever I need to do for a couple of days. And then, and it's fine to pick up, you know, it's not, it's no problem, but um, yeah, you're braver than I am. Cause I, <laughs> I typically will paint. Well, I, if I paint any kind of, of, uh, you know, metallic silver or whatever, yeah, um, I put the model away and I leave it for 24 hours. I don't no, mess I, with it for that long. I just, I say, okay, I'm done with, with that. I'm going to call smart. it a day and, um, you know, go do something else with, with the rest of my day and yeah. I'll come back to it tomorrow. Yeah. That's, and too, I like smart. using, I like using thin coats too, because some guys will come in and they'll put it on too thick, you know, cause they want to try and get it done in one in one shot and you can't do that with natural metal you have to like they, they say you're not supposed to thin alclad but when i would shoot alclad i would even put i would put a drop or two of lacquer thinner in it anyway just to kind of yeah just to thin it out some more and that way yeah i mean it may take you 20 minutes but you're putting down nice you know even smooth certain you know so finish down when you sprayed when you sprayed your p38 so that's that's uh -huh. kind of you know so we've We've picked out what natural metal finish we want to do. We've prepped the surface. We got our paint. 
We've got everything nice and polished. So when you're spraying, Frill, what, what PSI are you spraying? And kind of talk about how you're actually applying the paint and how thin or thick it is. And just talk about what you like to use and how you're doing it. Okay. Well, what I'll do is I'm not really 100%, probably about 15 to 18 PSI on my regulator because, like I said, I run a CO2 tank. So I'll open it up, and when I hit the button, if I'm sitting about, I would say anywhere from like about 15 PSI or so is where I'm at because you want it to, to kind of come out of the brush. You know, you don't want it to like not because if, it, if, it, if you don't have enough air pressure, it's going to speckle on you, and you'll get that in, in your finish, and you don't want that. And what I've done, is over the years I have my several Iwatas eclipse e- eclipses, and I have one with the 0.5 needle in it that I have just completely set up, set aside just for natural metal finishes, and it sucks paint down quick too, man. Because you'll be spraying, you'll watch it next in the color. Well, yeah, cup. well, the 0.5 needle, I right? Mean, it's yeah, gonna, it just, it's, even at 15 psi, it's gonna yeah. suck at paint quick. And then what I'll do. Is I will go through, go around, and I always have a jig or something. I'll make something where I'm not touching it with my hands, and then and it's on a stick. And I'll go through, and I'll put a, I'll put a, you know, a coat over the entire model. It'll all be masked off, and I'll just go over, and I'll just, you know, put a dust coat down just to kind of get a, something down first in which to build my subsequent layers upon. So I won't try go filling in everything in one shot. So I'll go through, and I'll just, I'll just start shooting the whole thing. And after a while, you'll start to see the, me- the the metal come out. And when you do it like that, I just think it looks really smooth, man. And like, and if you get to a spot in the, on on the kit where you haven't sanded or anything, and it just looks like slickered and greased out shit. Yeah, that I think that for real, I think that that's the key is having a dedicated because I've got one too. I've got a dedicated airbrush, one of my neos that I just use for spraying uh, metallic paint through. And it makes a big difference. I don't have to worry about getting speckles and a camo pattern or something like that. So it just seems mm-hmm. to, you know, but I, I, every time I spray that thing, I, I clean it. Um, cause that's the, yeah, the spray so, gunner guys are going to like me at nationals. Cause it looks like I'm buying a new airbrush. There you go. There you go. Um, so yeah, I, I think that that's the key, right? Spraying a little higher than you normally spray PS, um, PSI wise. So again, I like to spray about 20, 25 PSI, and then, but I'm thinning it like 90% thinner, like 10% paint. So it's really thin. And you just put several light coats on and it just, uh, it really works. Um, trying to, trying to spray it thick and open it up the airbrush, man. It's just, it's just, it's, it's going to pool on you and it's going to run on you. And it did you get that orange peel look and it's just not yeah, cool. And that's what you're not trying, good. you know, that's your, tr- yeah. And you're trying to avoid that with, you know, any gloss surface. Yeah, you know you don't want the orange peel, and yep. uh, I just do that and just spray, and then I'll just go over, and then I'll start. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna start in the left wing, and I'll start, you know, and I'll kind of count my passes. Like if I go through and I do three passes on the left wing, then I'll go to the right wing and I'll do three passes. Same thing, same distance, and I'll just build it up from there. Then I'll go to the fuselage three passes, and I just slowly build everything up, and then you get that nice overall metal finish, and then. Like I like to use lacquers for that stuff. So in like, you know, a couple hours you can mask and I always detect masking tape. And when I use it, you'll see it around my bench. You know, I've always stuck it to my, my greasy ass forehead or the palm of my hand or whatever. And, and I'll use that to mask panels or whatever on it. Cool. And just do it from there. Darren, why do you guys, do you guys uh, assume y'all do kind of the same thing? As far as masking stuff goes, when it no, comes just, to that? just, how you're spraying it and what PSI you're spraying and yeah. Is there, are there Um, any like special things that you're doing while you're, cause I mean, it's, it's tricky. It's not like spraying normal, regular paint, you know? Well, like I said, I pretty much have only ever used Alclad when it comes to shooting metals and, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll crank it up a little bit more, maybe go from like my typical 10 to 12 PSI up to around 15 to get a good shot on it. And, sure. Uh, yeah. And, and and that stuff's kind of it's pretty self leveling and everything, um, so, you know. And again, I, I know it's alclad and it dries pretty quick, but I'll still give it like a day before I ever even think about putting any masking on or something. Yeah, like me that, too. Yeah, and I, I'll even put in like even with the pre mixed stuff, I still put a little bit of unicorn tears in there. I, I don't know. 
Yeah, um, it just makes it you feel just, good. <laughs> it does make me feel good. It does. Yes. Yep. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Same here. Cool. Good deal. Well, all right. So she's the paint's down. We're not touching it. Do you guys polish after your after it's dry and you've let it sit for a few days? Do you guys ever polish after you've painted? A little. A little. A little. A little. I'll take my my trusty t shirt. Yep. Throw a little spittle on the model. There you go. And just rub it a little bit. Oh boy. And, until it feels glassy smooth. Yeah. Yeah. Because there, yeah. there's all, especially in the wing roots. And even in the wing yes. roots with super, I mean, I'll take a Q tip, rub it on the tongue, and just very gently polish that wing root so that I'm getting rid of, because it's, that's just in those 90 degree areas, it just gets a little grainy sometimes. So you can solve that by just, little bit of roll of the q-tip it's just um enough of a i guess it's just rough enough that it doesn't damage the paint but it helps polish it so that's what i like to use for wing roots i think it, it works really well um but yeah once once the polish is on now comes the tricky part so me once the polish is on i like to use i like to go ahead and put a wash on before i put i do this with all my models i always put a wash on before I put decals on. Now, if I'm going to paint markings, I'll, I'll wait to, I'll go ahead and paint the markings first and then I'll do the wash afterwards. But I like to put the wash on, polish the uh, crap out of the model, get all the residue off. Then I go back and put um, the decals on top. And then once the decals are on, you know, use the whole process with putting a de uh, certain decal, um, um, what you would call it, uh, you know, solutions and whatnot on. Now, some people will go ahead and put down like a clear coat, like put down like a, a gloss lacquer or whatever. So what are you guys' thoughts on once she's all polished up and she's ready for decals, are you putting a lacquer coat on top first and then putting no. decals on top or are you going straight on the metal? Just going straight yeah, on the I'm metal. I'm not. I, it's nice. It's nice and smooth. I just put the yeah, sticker right on the right on the nice smooth surface. Yep, and with the new decals that are out today, I mean they're going to go down over a smooth surface. Fine. Hell yeah, yep. No clear coat. Yeah. Not going to drown Minimize it in the future. Layers. Minimize the layers. Yeah, no yeah. future. That's the I thing. want a future, no future, but no future. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. It's the why put a clear coat down if you don't need a clear coat because that lacquer is freaking rock hard man rock hard and if it's smooth and glossy you're good yeah. to go good to go so yeah i don't i don't put a i don't put a clear coat now okay so now decals are on what you putting on top of it you putting anything on top of it and what you putting on top of it i like to put i like to put like a semi gloss on top of the decals kind of well, help blend them you're not into put the, a mat, to the right? metal so, well yeah, I, some gonna... people do some, sometimes you sometimes would. Sometimes you yeah. would if it's a if it's a it real depends. yeah. It, that's a, I'm going to use your answer, Darren. That's my, that that's my answer. Okay, sorry, I'm not using it. I was borrowing. I was borrowing. No, no, I was. Excuse me. I was yelling at Tim, not you. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> so Scott gave acknowledgments. <laughs> yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I I think that, but that is you are correct, my friend. That's a. It really depends. You know, it goes back to what's your research and what do you what are you trying to achieve? Like I know that when I did. The P51, I wanted a semi-gloss appearance, so I semi-glossed the entire model. When I did the SU27, I wanted a little bit more of a flat look, but I didn't apply a flat coat or any kind of semi-gloss, nothing over the metal. What I used was I used a super, super thin, to me, a black-brown mix. Thin enough that when you spray it on the metal or on the paint, you can't see it. You can't see it until yeah. you slowly build it up and then you can see it. Well, guess what? And I leave it alone and then I come back with a t-shirt and I polish the crap out of it and it gives this crazy looking metallic sheen to it. It's just awesome how it works. I've never, now it doesn't do it. If I put more lacquer on top, it doesn't work. If I put enamel on top, it doesn't work. If I put acrylic to Mia, flat black and brown mixture on top it works it it's like hmm. it microscopically keeps some of the black in 
the surface and then it takes some of it off. So it gives this weird, like metallic she I don't know how to explain it. It's just really a cool hmm. trick that I learned. Um, so when I'm weathering natural metal, I'm using just the Tamiya black brown super thin mix in my Sotar or my PS seven seventy one. Yeah, I think I'm it's using. time for me to try something new. Yeah. Yeah. That to me, a black brown yep. mix is the, that's, that's all, that's my weathering agent. I don't use oils. I don't use pastels. I don't use any of that stuff. I use the airbrush. It's just, and it's thin. And if you don't like it, it's thin enough that you can wet the t-shirt with your, with your old tongue and wipe it off. Try again. Yep. Hmm. I need to do Give a demo a of this stuff. It's pretty, yes. it's, it's pretty amazing. But that SU-27 is it was all weathered with, um, with the airbrush. I think that would make a great video, Scott. I know. I should probably do one. I've had people ask, how do you do that? How did you do that? Because, you, you know, because you can demo it, but, yeah. you know, damn it. If you're, if you're watching, you do it once, and yeah. then you don't have a video. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm the kind of guy that was like, wait, how did you, you do just that? do? <laughs> yeah. And, and and then I hit the rewind button and I watch it again and I go, uh, shit, I still don't know, understand how he yep. did that. And then yep. I do it again. I go, ah, now I think I got it. Yeah. I mean, that's just how I. And yeah, that was, I know Justin and I, we stumbled on this super thin to me, a black brown mix years ago. And that's my go-to weathering agent. That's what I use to do all the shading and all that. That's, that's just what I like to use. I know Darren, you like to use oils, you know, and, and, and that works for you. Um, yep. I, yeah, I, I, just I prefer, prefer oils too, yeah. but I want to, I want to have other tools in my toolbox. Sure. Yep. 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 I think I like the airbrush because it's more permanent maybe. And it's more resilient to fingerprints and rubbing up and just all of that. Like it doesn't, when I put it on there, it pretty much stays where I put it. And it's, it's a super, super easy to control because it's really thin. like hardly any paint at all. And so when you first start, it is easy to screw up because it's so thin you're spraying and you're like, is it coming? Oh, spider. So you just have to do it a few times and realize that, yep, there is paint coming out and I'm just going to go slow and I'm just going to keep making the same motion and I'm going to slowly build it up. And the next thing you know, it starts to it starts to take effect and you're like, Oh crap, I can see it now. And it keeps you, it gives you your margin of error is very large when you're doing this. Um, and it's even, it's even, it works even better on camo, like a matte color where you're, where you're spraying, it'll work even better. Um, your margin of error is, is just huge, but we're talking about natural metal finishes. So anyway, so when I'm weathering, that's what I'm weathering with. I'm weathering with, um, the airbrush and a Tamiya black brown, very thin mix, like ninety percent thinner, ten percent paint. Um, now I will for a for a panel line wash, I'll use an like on lacquer. I use an enamel Tamiya, the the good old Tamiya um, accent color, uh, black or dark brown. Uh, that seems to work really well on natural metal finishes. And I use, I have some. Um, you can use a very gentle, um, odorless enamel thinner and a Q-tip to wipe, it'll come right off. I don't need to use Rosinol or anything like that. I haven't tried Rosinol on the well, metal. I'm afraid that might eat it. But I use some very, yeah, light. yeah really light. Even though it's a lacquer, it might still. I, I mean, I get, with the Rosinol is where I get, I just get nervous. That's That stuff's pretty hot. And if I'm, I'm af- It is hot. Yeah. yeah. I'm afraid that it if I really? took Rosinol to a natural metal finish and I rub with the Q-tip, I'm afraid I'm, I might could test it out on the mule. I've never tried it though. I don't because I haven't needed it. I the the gentlest stuff I have, which is I think it's uh from MIG, it's just enamel odorless thinner, which is it's it's not very hot at all. And it works it's white spirit is what it yeah, is. Works really, really, yeah, I was really well. say white spirit is what I usually use. Good stuff. And uh and I will say when I want something weak. I have had success using AK extreme metal and then using Tamiya panel liner over it. You got big ones, man. You get putting enamel on enamel. Yep. I don't recommend and, that to people. <laughs> well, I, I maybe <laughs> yeah, I got lucky, but I, but I tried it out 
and I'm trying. It was my uh, it was my Tamiya M- Mustang that I did, but I put Tamiya panel liner. I didn't I, I didn't glob it on, and I rarely do I ever use the brush that comes in the thing because I don't think you get enough control, and sometimes the the wash will get up on that that brush, and when you go to touch it on your model, you'll get a big old glob. Exactly. And now you got to. And so yeah, I get nervous I telling people to put enamel on enamel because that's. And see, I don't I don't slather it on either. I put it I, a panel line like where a panel line it's joins. Very precise. I'll put it right there in the center. And I and, you know, and so I don't have I don't put it like a sludge wash. I don't get messy with it. I try to keep it neat because that's less you've got to remove. So what and kind of brush just, do you use if you don't use the brush that's in the cap? And you you don't slather it on. What's yes, probably sir. some really thin pointed like detail type of brush, you know. Yep. But I my my worry about it is again just you know chemistry, and I'm not a chemist, but um, I know that if I put enamel on lacquer, I'm safe. If I put enamel on enamel, if you're getting away with it, good on you. But I, to the average modeler out there, I don't recommend putting enamel on enamel. Because I went and I took for trouble. a test, I think it was the testers, um, T33, because I robbed the tip tanks out to put on a monogram kit to do a an F80. And um, so I took it and I scribed some lines on the on the wing and I shot the wing with AK um, Extreme Metal Aluminum. And I, and I, I let that sit. Now, I, I didn't go and do this like 30 minutes later because it's an enamel. And you got to give enamels enough time to off gas and to dry. And it was like a good three, four days. I let it sit before I did anything though. So I made sure that that base layer was nice and dry. And I didn't. And so when I put the, the oil on it, you know, some spots I let the oil sit till it was dry. And some, I just like 15 minutes, I went in there and just kind of lightly, you know, wiped it up. And even the stuff that, that I let dry on it, I was able to sit there and just rub on it, and the, the AK Extreme never came off. Well, then it's got, they've got to have something else in that formula to help protect against using an enamel wash. Because, yeah, that's uh, I could understand if you're using like Windsor and Newton Artist Oils with Turpinoid, because mm-hmm. that's a little, that's not as right. hot. Yep. But uh, yeah, I just, I mean, I, that's great that it worked for you, but if some, if somebody out there and, listener model geeks listener land is wanting to know what to do i I just wouldn't recommend putting enamel washes on enamel paint i think if i was going to use um ak extreme metal i might use just some of the water-based washes that they have because then you're safe you you don't have to worry about um jacking stuff up i'll give it another whirl i'll paint something with extreme metal and i'll do it again and next time we do an episode i'll report my results yeah, man, that sounds good. Yeah, because I, Justin, we, I can just, see it now. There's going to be a there's going to be an email that comes in that says, "Well, oh, Frildo yeah. says I can do it," and Manny ruined my model. I know Justin. Justin has had decent results um, using AK Extreme Metal with um, he. I think he might have used Windsor and Newton, um, you know, a Turpinoid to do the wash, and he said there were no issues at all. Uh, but again, I I don't I don't doubt folks that have been build models for years and understand about how to apply and remove a wash correctly. You know, you get some guys out there that use a two inch brush and put the whole put that stuff all just slather it on the whole model and then use a a paper towel to wipe it off soaked with thinner, and that's just <laughs> you're just uh, and, and they yeah, rub it. Yeah, you that, see them in there rubbing it. And yeah, like, I used to do that. And back in the day, and so how, I was wondering, like, man, well, the paint's coming off. How did you remove the excess wash off the enamel? So you, the enamel paint with a, with yep. AK, and then you had an, an enamel wash. How did you yep, remove used, it? So what I used to remove it was, because I didn't have any Tamiya enamel thinner at the time, was I used AK White Spirit to remove it. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure if you used regular enamel thinner, I'm pretty sure that enamel paint would come right off. <laughs> but we'll give it a shot. Pretty sure. Test time. Pretty sure, man. Pretty sure you use enamel on enamel with enamel thinner. Uh, I don't know, man. I was in the test squadron. I good, don't know how to read a luck. test plan. Yeah. Write one. I'll, I'll write up a test plan. <laughs> yeah, don't read it. Write it, dude. <laughs> write it. And then follow it. I'll do, I'll do it, too, so we don't have any biased results. We'll see. We'll see what, because I've got some AK Extreme 
metal. Because I know when I used it before and I put on a wash and I went to remove it, that shit came right off. Right off. I was like, ooh, I'm not putting that on the model. <laughs> so anyway. Cool. Well, we'll well, I'll be anxious to see your results and uh Me too. to to hear um hear the expertise um from you for how to because I don't know how to put enamel on enamel. I I haven't perfected that yet. So be anxious wow. to hear how you how you do that. Um Look okay, anyway. There. I've any, already got the there you, you got go. The mule? Got cool. mule. Good right deal. There. I'll wipe it down with alcohol any, so its surface is nice and clean. And I'll just shoot it straight on the plastic. There you go. And we'll go from there. I'll do the whole thing because it's got plenty of panel lines for different stuff. Good deal. Post pictures. Yeah, man. Post pictures. Why, Darren, you guys have any thoughts on on the sort of the final using different types of washes and all that stuff and what paints you might prefer and all that stuff? Again, I haven't really set those side of the the boundary of Al clad in the last 10, 20 years <laughs> or whatever that stuff come up, it's, man. But it's daunting uh, though. That's the thing. Like I, yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't build a natural metal aircraft until I finally broke down and did that P 51 for our group build. That's the first natural metal finish that I've done in years because I was scared. I was like, I'm going to F this away. There is no, and I did. I did. I on my mule, it was awful. I'm like, well, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> you know what I mean? Darren holding up the saber dog. Oh man. Yeah. It's just I, but saw, I, think, I don't do I don't do these finishes for that very reason. They're such yeah. a pain in the arse. Finicky. You know? Yeah. Um like this uh this damn windscreen area that I had to I had to blend in. You know, that thing had to be smooth as a baby's butt, or you just see ever everything, every little blemish. It yep. took forever. Um, yeah, it's just so much work. Now, yep. you know, going back to y'all's paint stuff, MRP, lacquer. I money. shoot it just like any other MRP, per, M- MRP, and this stuff is money. So no issues whatsoever. Yeah, that's, I used M- on anyway. the SU27, I used, I used MRP silver and a, a one or two other colors, but then, yeah. When I was weathering it, I just, again, put the Tamiya tape that I had put on my, same thing with frill, put it on my forehead because then it's real, it's hardly tacky at all and, um, and lay it on there and then spray the different panels, different shades. And yeah, it makes a, makes it's, it's pretty neat. Some of the different, and then you can use like their violet and some of the, yeah. uh, the reds and blues that they have. It's, it's pretty it's good mrp you just can't go go wrong with mrp man that's just that's good stuff it's good paint it's good stuff cool all right well and and again i think once it's on there you got decals on you know it's it's weathered you're happy for the final coat i just like to put on like i said um like a semi-gloss um kind of coat um maybe something a little bit towards the flatter side but not super flat not dead flat you know and, uh, and then I think above all is through all this process when you're painting natural metal, cause that's the bad news. The bad news is that it's just not a quick process to get a nice natural metal finish. It's going to take you a while, you know, so don't rush yep. it folks. That's the number one thing, even more than paint and all this other stuff is just be patient and don't rush it. Don't rush it. <laughs> anyway, cool. Well, um, sorry for the freaking diatribe long um explanation hopefully you guys got something out of talking about natural metal finishes i'll just throw it out to the group anything else uh you guys want to add yes i i don't i've been i've been kind of quiet through this whole thing because natural metal finishes just scare the hell out of me i try and stay away from them (laughs) you know i'm kind of so i'm kind of coming around to them because like you you know i was afraid to do them too till i sacked up and did one did the p38 or my p51 but I'm kind of coming around to them. Like I enjoy doing the P38 and the Claude. I mean, I enjoyed doing the metal on that with that, uh, that LP 11, you know? So I guess it depends on what you use, you know? Well, yeah. I think well, I'll I, say I, this, the 86 here, I want to go and finish up. I'm, I'm going to weather the hell out of this one. So I'm not real worried about how, you know, the finish finishes. So yeah. Uh, anyway. Well, I, I think the I'm key sorry, Scott, is, go ahead. No, no, no. I was just saying the key is just don't be afraid to try it. And when you're practicing, take it, take your mule out and just experiment, figure out what combinations work, what process, what sequence you have to go in, what, what washes work with what 
different types of paint and just be patient and see, you know, even throw on a decal, see how the decal reacts, see how the setting solutions react. Who knows? I don't, I have I had to put on solve a set. I don't know if solve a set's going to jack with the metalizers or not, or I don't even know if that new to me is super strong. I, it might, it might mar it a bit, you know, cause that's, that stuff's hot. So just test that stuff out on a mule, but, but again, just don't be afraid to try it. And, uh, if you guys got questions or anything, just, just let us, let us know. So anyway, all right, good topic folks, but, uh, it is time to wrap things up. So, uh, first off, just want to pass out to everybody again, how thankful we are to be able to put on this podcast and have you all as listeners. Thanks for so much support. And, uh, of course, we love to um, give thanks to our, our sponsors, uh, Furball, Detail and Scale, Bases by Bill, Tamiya USA, and Sprue Brothers. But above all, it's the listeners. The listeners, you guys are the ones that Amen. give us the motivation to get out there and keep this podcast rolling. Amen. All right. Amen, brother. Well, episode uh, 57, <laughs> In the Books. That's a long, it's been, been a long episode, man. Lots to talk about. Um, but a big thank you to everybody for supporting us over the past few years. We were, t- we were talking about this earlier. It's been almost, it's like we're going on our third year doing this. Yeah, I know. It's, we, we were. Yeah, it's crazy. Isn't it? Crazy. It's, it's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Yep. But again, I think, uh, just speaking for all of us here at Mile Geeks, we appreciate everybody's support. And again, just want to say thank you. Of course, always a huge thank you to Tim. Tim, thanks for sitting in. Appreciate it. Always love having you on board. As always, glad to be here. Yeah, cool. And uh, uh, the big thing, again, uh, it's the support that we get from you guys listening. I just really appreciate it. So I hope everybody's enjoyed listening uh, as much as we just absolutely love sitting here and talking about the hobby that we love and want to help grow and, uh, and evolve with the times. So thanks again for making us part of your valuable bench time. Again, get out there and build something. You know, so be excellent to each other, and we'll catch y'all later, all right? Out from the geeks. Take care, everybody. See ya. Peace. Later. Good night. Yeah, I got a shout-out, man. Do it. It made my day.